I'm, I'm right. sorry, can we, can we all just stop talking for a minute? I've just been told I'm going to get boned in the ass, and you're worried about what beer you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> There's the show for it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, FTW Live proudly brings to you the number one wrestling-related podcast in the world. The hardball talking host, live chat hooligans with the most, the FTW Podcast. If you ain't down with that, we got two words for ya. Lynch Clinch! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FTW, a weekly WWE and TNA discussion where wrestling fans talk the wrestling world in all its laughable glory. Check out fansdogwrestling.com, your new home for WWE and TNA headlines, commentary, and expert discussions with like-minded fans that you can only find in that little corner of the internet. This is episode number 194, recorded live on December 10th, 2013 on ftwlive.com. Tonight we're going to talk some TNA, specifically a certain guy that works there named AJ Styles, uh, some TLC, and some Slammies, so it should be a lot of fun. I am Harrison. And with us tonight is Kevin. Say hello, Kevin. What's up? Me, say hello. I am back. Better than ever. <laughs> Nick, say hello, Nick. My body is ready. <laughs> <laughs> Rob will be back with us shortly. Uh, and Joe, say hello, Joe. My voice is my passport. Verify me. <laughs> Please tell and- me somebody gets that joke. No, I have not. no clue. What you're Nobody's talking. seen the movie Sneakers. Go fuck yourselves. What when was it made? Uh, 1993 or no, 1994. No, no, I know you weren't born yet. You weren't born yet. And Garvin is helming the board. Say hi, Gar. Hey now. You ever For everything we talk. <laughs> everything that we talk about here tonight, head on over to ftwpodcast.com and click on the FTW 194 show notes link. So uh, first thing on the docket, let's get some TNA all up in this uh, biznatch. Uh, first thing on the docket, um, TNA, uh, well, I mean, Impact is a self. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're heading towards the tail end of this thing. we only got a couple of them left. We don't need more pay-per-views remaining. Uh, how are you guys feeling about how Impact is, uh, how it happened this past week? How is it going? Was it kind of running out of gas? I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think TNA is hitting, uh, ending everything on a high note? It's it's been an interesting group of shows that they've been doing. I, I I've I enjoyed this recent impact. I don't know about anybody else, but yeah, it was good. Um, uh, it's, it's remained high quality. Uh, I th- I'm looking forward to how this championship tourney is going to end. Um, admittedly, I was kind of disappointed that Hardy beat Rude, but in the end, it makes sense now that it's uh, Hardy versus Magnus. Um, just because I'm fully convinced that Magnus is still going to turn heel. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on the whole Magnus thing now. I wasn't originally convinced, but yeah, I am now. Um, I, I don't think I, I think I think TNA had a couple of good shows, but then last week's show was pretty. Ugh. I, I didn't I didn't really like it. I got I got a bit fed up halfway through. To be completely honest with you, really annoyed me. But uh, it's it's still it's still been all right though. It's not been massively bad, especially Rockstar Spud. Can you hear? Oh, Rockstar Spud. Oh, seriously. <laughs> Change your freaking name. I, that, I'm, seriously, that's the thing that bothers me the most about him. Is that is the name? About the name. Ah, oh, give, give him some, give him some credit. Rockstar Spud. Rockstar Potato, ladies and gentlemen. You tell me where you're going to get a better Rockstar Potato. You tell me. I love the work he's doing. Uh, he just plays the the simpering toady so well. He totally fits the Lee Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Offended by that. <laughs> yeah, I was I was most impressed by uh, Ethan Carter's heel work. That was brilliant. 
Yeah, speaking of that, how do you guys feel about Ethan Carter? Uh, do you think he's starting to kind of hit his stride uh, as far as how things are handled? I mean, you know, Nick, I mean, you, you nailed it that he did great on Impact. I mean, Joe, Lee, what do you guys think? Um, I'm not going to lie. I, I didn't like the whole Ill Hebner thing. I know, I know it's me, but I just... I mean, I like I like, I like, like the guy. I mean, it's, it's different. It's a little bit of a change, but really, do we have to go to Ill Hebner? Come on. We can do better than that. He can do better than that. You can do better than turning the father, the son against the father like that. I don't think so. That's that's top heel work. That was uh, no, that was entertaining, but I I kind of agree with Lee. I think going to Earl he- doing the Earl Hebner thing this early, it kind of yeah. sucks. It's like when Taz came in to WWE, he freaking beats Kurt Angle, breaks Angle's winning streak, and then pretty much goes right into a thing shortly thereafter with like King. It, it's kind of like. Trying to drag it out, I think that's what they're trying to do, you know, just to make make the word, make the whole, uh, make the weeks, you know, for, for an Ethan Carter. But that's what it came across to me. Well, Ethan Carter needed something to get out of this rut that he's been in of beating nobodies and has beens. It, he's been getting pretty Shark singy. Shark Boy even... is no has been. <laughs> Curry Man is no has been. All right. All right. <laughs> Names from the past. <laughs> well. Earl Hebner is the biggest name from the past I can think of. Don't mind. Yeah, but he's not a wrestler. That's what makes it so great. That's what makes it so bad. Uh, from a match perspective, yeah, but not from a storyline perspective. Yeah, but I don't want to see. I don't want to see him. I, I want to see him wrestle. I want to see what the guy can do. And I, okay, yeah, I want a story along with it. But I want to see someone you can actually feud with who's going to actually wrestle rather than some well, not douche like Earl Hebner, but just a you know referee. Sure, there's there's something to be said for that. Obviously, I want to see the guy really show up what he can do, but it's this still early lead, going. This will lead to a Hebner family, like like the Heenan family will have the Hebner family in TNA. <laughs> that would be brilliant. <laughs> be, be hilarious. I, I just think basically that it's they kind of he's in a holding pattern more than anything. I just I, I don't I don't like that. Very, yeah. I just I, I think he's I think he can really really go for it. go for. It. Well, his his character is still developing. I mean, it's it's still in the early stages. So that's what I like about it. That's why you know there's so many ways they can go with it. So yeah, part okay. of me agrees with you, Lee. I, I I'm I'm totally with you in that. I want to see Ethan Carter do something in the ring with quality wrestlers, wrestlers that we think that he could be on the same level. I mean, there there is a lot of talent on the on the roster that he can work with. But at the same time, I mean, we, we do have to be patient. We can't expect a lot of big things to happen now and a oh, lot yeah. of stories to be pushed forward knowing uh, just the general schedule right now. Oh, yeah, no, I've got, I'm totally, totally we want, you know, don't use up, you know, big matches, you know, on, when, when they're taping, you know, three days in a row, you know, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. I just, I just, the only thing is I just think they could use someone just a little bit better than they were. That's, that's, that's it, really. Yeah, yeah. I, and, that, and that was the one thing that I hated the most about it was that it was Hebner. If it was anyone else, anyone else on staff, I think I would have been fine with it, but Hebner is so awkward anyways. <laughs> That it yeah, just yeah, didn't it, like there was no there was no like real pushback. Um, it I don't know. It just seemed like Kepner was there. Just out of curiosity, who's a big or at least the biggest name on the roster right now that Ethan Carter could go over, but isn't already involved in the storyline right now? That's oh, that's no that's 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 that to me the other problem though because the, you know there's not the massively big roster is there for Ethan Carter to even face without you know go into a. No, a feud, so I'm, I'm with you on that, in my opinion. Samoa Joe, man, you could go against Samoa Joe, go over on him. They could have a feud, an actual feud. It might actually be interesting. Give Joe something to do. And... I, don't, I don't think they've used Joe properly for... Right, it's been years. So if they're going to continue to fuck him up, you might as well, you fuck over the character, you might as well just do something positive with it and put some heat on uh, Chris in the chat brings up a good point. Chavo. Yeah, there is Chavo. You could use Chavo in that way. Um... Chavo's a good stepping stone. Yeah. He'll get you for at least a moment Chavo. before. Dun, dun, dun. Somebody important. I mean, would this really build up Ethan Carter, the way Chavo's been booked? Uh, I mean, we haven't no, seen no, him in forever. Look, you gave us the qualification, Nick, that they didn't have to be in a storyline, that they were on the TNA roster. The pickings are slim. I, I uh, I'm giving you what we got name, here. Or at least a big-ish no. name. No, 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 no. If you don't like Chavo, why don't you just get Cohen White in, okay? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean that would be bigger than this. <laughs> so, Nick, Nick, you're 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 absolutely right. I mean, I'm looking at the roster right now, and there isn't anyone really on the roster it's that's him. not involved in something. 
Because, like, sure, you could throw a Garrett Bischoff in there or a Nux, but they're still attached to the ending of the Aces and Eights, so you have to assume yeah. they're going to be involved in something soon, I would imagine. I bet he'd really like to go over Christy Hemme. Hey-oh. Um, You could throw him but in the X Division. Kill him. You could throw him in the X Division. I mean, we do have Kenny King. Manic is still around. Um, X, X Division would be a step down for Ian Carter, in my opinion. Really? The, the way he's been booked, I think I think they're trying to build him up as a big, big, big thing. Rather, I think the X Division will send him downwards. No offense to anyone down there, but I just I just think they're trying to push it a lot more. But. As in world title race? Yeah. Eventually, so yeah. if that's the case, then yeah, we're going to have to exactly. wait until this is all over. No, no, you throw him in the X Division, you have him win the X Division title, and then, no. oh, he can't turn hmm. it. That's going to be Yeah, you got, you got some time to wait before you can yeah. you actually see it. Yeah. Before the apparent reignition uh, between Sting and Magnus, I was thinking that Ethan Carter was going to wind up in a feud with Sting because of the whole entitlement uh, thing that Sting's been throwing around lately. Yeah. Sting seems pretty entitled. The problem is, when was the last time you saw a good Sting match? Uh, Austin WCW. Aries for WCW. Who said WCW? That was that was what I was getting at. <laughs> nice job. Yeah, but yeah. definitely Aries. I mean, his match yeah. with Magnus recently wasn't bad either. Well, it wasn't good though. It wasn't exciting, <laughs> but it wasn't bad. I, I just, I, I don't think they should. I think we're pull, I, if we're clutching at straws, are we? Let's be honest. If, if the if guys come on, if we set the bar any lower, we're not going to be able to remove them from the floor. <laughs> All right. So uh, aside from here's, here's, aside here's, from a, thought. here's, here's a thought. Here's a here's a thought. Here's a thought. Sign Nash to a Legends contract in TNA. <laughs> Put him up against Nash. He can blow out his ACL when he walks into the ring. And then Ethan Carter gets Kevin, the pin. Kevin, no, Kevin, oh we booked the world's God. worst pay-per-view a few weeks ago. That episode but it wasn't happened. For TNA. We're not doing that again. That was so good. We need to but do it that. wasn't for TNA. I mean, you know, we, we gotta be we gotta be thinking forward here. We can do it for them too. <laughs> All right, triple threat. I mean, Ethan we need the Carter band in every match. match. <laughs> what, was that, Nick? what was that, Nick? What was that, Nick? Triple threat. Ethan Carter versus Kevin Nash versus the gobbledygooker. <laughs> <laughs> well, where do you leave the boogeyman? Yeah, but no, boogeyman's a special guest referee. Or a special guest enforcer. Let's just make it really terrible. He, he comes out post-match and clobbers a winner. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we end 2013 in TNA. Uh, all right, so aside from EC3, Impact 365 hit a new gear uh, with the new interactive platform that they debuted this past week on uh, TNA's website. Uh, did you guys have any chance to tinker with it? How do you think TNA played it? W- w- how do you guys feel about it? Do you think it was a step forward for them? Uh, I liked it, but uh, I was kind of confused how they were handling it. I think I figured it out um, as far as – because, okay, basically it's it's not it's not great. I mean, let's start – from there it's it, it it's not designed well it seems pretty poor quality overall i mean when we're when we're looking at what wwe is doing on on that second screen's uh side um but it seems like they they are still forcing a few things and not allowing things to just progress naturally so they have this this live chat but the live chat is not necess- it's not it's not live chat like how we do it on fans talk it's a Q and A with with Daniels and Kaz, and if you aren't necessarily asking them questions, um, they moderate your comments, so you might not even have your comments there. So it, it's like a second screen thing, but you have to stay on topic with what they're they're showing, and they're only allowing some people on Twitter through. And I think it's a it's a Dave Lagana list on Twitter. That's that's as much as I I was able to get because I I I tweeted all night and I I never showed up there, so I imagine it's some kind of list that they're also moderating. The, the, the only thing I'd say is uh, I agree with you when you say it's badly designed. I, I don't like the design. I just think they need to tinker. I bet then again, you know, it's the, the first week, so if yeah. you just tinker around a bit, play around, you know, just, just experiment more than anything. Uh, you no, know, but at least at least they're trying something. Yeah, yeah. no, I I think it's a great concept, and I I like where they're going. I I just can't wait till it's uh fleshed out a bit more. So you know, so it's obvious what you can do and what you're supposed to be doing when you're there, and then also. Working on mobile would would be fantastic as well. I mean, it's not responsive at all. The video player does not work unless you have Flash, which means you can't use it on Android. Um, so so that that was kind of a bummer. Um, one thing I do like about WWE's version is that they do show the back the backstage. Uh, or I'm sorry, not not backstage, but the matches during commercial break. 
this was just backstage interviews and it all it, it, it was obviously taped pre-taped so it just didn't feel it just didn't feel right but it's but a good step the funny thing is tna like tna actually you know used to do that they didn't they if i remember rightly tna have done that before yeah they just do stuff on the website i believe yeah, so they, they, um, they've put it on the They've um they've put matches in between. The thing is though, like you, they, TNA can't really do that for the next month because you said it. They've taped it. Yeah. So with them taping it, it could it look like if they move on to the next thing, you know, you're gonna see a totally different crowd for a kickoff, made potentially, you know, or um, a different yeah. part of the show. Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit awkward. But but, I was gonna say. Go on. No, I was gonna say I, because uh, what you said, Lee. I think you're right. I think as far as a way for a first step for a stress testing the system, just to make sure what they have set up will work, at least how everything they have going, the personnel that they put in, and everything. I mean, it was okay. Uh, yeah, Garvin, you're absolutely right. I mean, if they're gonna do a second screen, if you're gonna do a second screen uh, experience, it has to work on a phone and a tablet. You cannot do it on a laptop. It, it's not gonna work. I, you can't. Build it around a flash player. Yeah, it's, well, it's just, that's yeah. a non-starter. I mean, that, that defeats the purpose of what yeah. what our our idea as a society is is what a second screen is. A second screen is what you're holding in your hand. I have to, I'm gonna say I have to say one thing though. I mean, Dixie was interviewed this. It might have been this week. It might be the end of last week. When when she said that you know this is the way TNA are going forward. You know this is the future. This is and then she she used the words you know this is alternate from WWE. And the only thing I can think of is this is exactly what WWE are actually doing. They're well, pushing the mobile. They're pushing interactive. You know, this is it's exactly what WWE are doing. It's but, not different. But it's one screen of it instead of different areas. I mean, the the app is kind of un- unorganized that you can only see the the live tweet stream and nothing else. You can only see the video and nothing else. You can only see you know their news stream and that's it uh, for like for the WWE side. But with TNA side, you can see everything. All the time, and I think I think that's a better approach to it. Yeah, the the, the thing I'd say is it's just it's a similar concept. It's oh, yeah. not like like with TNA. TNA, just like she literally said, like she's trying to differ. You know, they're trying to di- you know differ from WWE. They're trying to create a different experience. It's just it it is essentially overall, if you look at it, the same. It, like, you know what I mean? It's the same way of looking at it. Right. You no. Know? Okay. No, it's it's a fair point. Uh, now to uh, anybody got final thoughts on this before we talk about. Especially the largest story to hit TNA in at least recent history, aside from as long as your last name isn't doesn't rhyme with Bulk Bogan. Well, I, I just I just want to say Lagana, <laughs> add me to that list so my tweets show up. Yeah, Lagana, go fuck yourself. Hey, Dave Lagana's a nice, you know, he's a nice guy. Fantastic guy. I I like chatting him up on uh, on Twitter. But add me the add me to this list. Say that again. I say, add me to this list. I want to be. I want no, to be no, a no, part the, of this. The part before that. The part before that. I said, I enjoy Twitter. chatting up with uh, Lagana on Twitter. Yeah, in England, that's slang for hitting on him. It is. Yeah. Oh, is that not mean the same thing over there? Oh, right. Sorry. No, it doesn't. Uh, no, 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 I am no, not. I am mean not nothing for like trying to imply that I'm hitting on Lagana, <laughs> but I would like him Dude. to be part of the show at one point. Garb, come on, take one for the team. If we gotta get on the list, and you gotta hit on him, <laughs> bust out the dough eyes. Hey, why don't we get a oh. kick started going so Garvin can go to dinner with him? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That is a uh, great idea. Again, that violates the terms of service for Kickstarter, and apparently skates a little too close to prostitution. Uh, yeah. Fuck it. So you're making a documentary. <laughs> We're taking documentaries are cool on Kickstarter. <laughs> Send him on the five dollar subway meal deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, all right. We're gonna try very hard to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, and it revolves around AJ Styles. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> potentially leaving TNA. Now, we're not gonna talk match results. We're not gonna talk about anything that's been taped or not been taped. We're just gonna have to deal in the realm of rumor. Nothing is set in stone. We won't know for another week, correct? Until next week. So, here we are, guys. Um, AJ Styles potentially leaving TNA. How firm do you, I mean, how confident are you in this happening? I'll go to Lee, since you run a news website. Well, it's hard to say about spoilers, really. Um, it's, 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 it's surprising, is the words I'd use. Very, very surprising, but I think it's very possible. Very, very possible. I, I, if you'd have said this a month ago, I'd have said it. If, if you'd have signed, you'd have signed by now, in my opinion. I really think that the fact that he's... Do, do we mention the contract? Or? Yeah. Yeah, we can talk about the contract. Yeah, we can talk... We just yeah. can't... We can't talk about anything that's taped on it. Okay. Okay. I'd like to stay okay. away from that. Okay, that's we fine. Can. Well, the fact that his contract's open on December the 17th, it, you, you must think he would have signed by now if he was going to sign. You know, you know, they've had nearly two months of these discussions. Two months. 
that's a long time, you know. And I mean, it, it's hard. It's so hard to imagine him signing at the last minute. No, I mean, but the thing is, he because it's a TNA original, it's that much more surprising that he's got that. You know, he probably is going. No, I mean, I don't think WWE will want him, not personally, but I just find WWE it pulled the same angle with Punk. You know, signing at the last minute, the whole thing. I mean, they did the you know the exact same thing. What? A year and a half ago? Yeah, 2011, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, so it's highly possible maybe they're just trying to mirror that. I mean, I mean, if anything, they're going to have AJ... If WWE would end up picking up AJ, it'd only be if he had the TNA title and would dump it in the trash can live on TV. <laughs> That's pretty much it. And then, they'd, then they'd send him to JTG land. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, if WWE signed him, they'd have to rename him as well. They'd have to. You can't call him AJ Styles. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Uh, no, you couldn't. Do you know, WWE have already got AJ Lee. Yeah, you and, just team uh, them together. They're the <laughs> AJs. <laughs> they, they already shared a, a similar storyline. Yeah, which got really confusing when we were discussing <laughs> between, the two, between those two at the time. Uh, all right, so... Well, uh, hey, real quick, I mean, okay, we, we, we are making these comparisons to CM Punk, but one thing that, that feels different from... My my perspective, at least, is you know CM Punk was very adamant that he was unhappy. Not not in storyline, but it felt like he was really unhappy with how things were going, and was seriously considering not resigning. AJ Styles hasn't really come out and said anything. Everything that he has done thus far has been on this TNA 365, and it's been in the storyline. So it's difficult to really gauge. What's actually happening and what's not actually happening. So that's I mean, if any, that's my concern here is like we we can jump on like the idea that the contract is up because that 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 is stated as fact if we're gonna follow PW Insider and whoever else is reporting this. But that's about it. That's the only fact that's that's out there right now. I mean, if if anything, this past week's ending would seem to give this rumor the would seem to lend the lie to this rumor as. He told Dixie, you want the title, come and get it. I don't think TNA would have had him say that if AJ was on his way out the door. I mean, if he really was, I don't I don't think they would have had that segment there at the end. And also, it's really hard to believe that AJ is really leaving when they've had stories like this pop up left and right over the past year, year and a half, two years. I mean, if TNA is going to put as much effort, as time and effort as they did into keeping Devon the first time his contract ended, how much more will they put into keeping AJ around? All I know is that I would love to see, like, FT, or not FTW 365, no, TNA 365 <laughs> go follow Dixie where she runs into, you know, goes up to AJ, kicks him in the stomach and puts him up for, like, the Dixie Clash or something, you know, like, gives him the Styles, gives him the Styles Clash <laughs> takes the title. <laughs> that would be, like, just great. Like, okay, fuck you, you're not resigning, we're doing this last bit. And she goes over on AJ. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, okay, uh, this is something that we'll probably be discussing a little bit later as well, but uh, just, yeah, I, I do want to thank everybody for not referring to anything that may or may not have happened on uh, Impact during a taping. Uh, any final thoughts on TNA before we jump on to WWE? Joseph Park is finally progressing. Oh, don't say that. Dude, I am I am really interested in this story. I, is it just me? <laughs> no, yeah. it, I like it no, too. No. No, no, it's you, no, it's you two. It's you two. Yeah. Go in the corner. Go, right, go in the corner. Let's go ahead. Just, Nick, just Nick go. and I will. We're, go. we're gonna we're gonna vamp together here. So uh, oh. the Joseph Park storyline. I I mean this this is going in a predictable way. It's it's a way that we we expected them to 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 go. Generally speaking, I mean you you only have a few different ways, but one of them was that he was really abyss. I think I think the way that they're handling it or the way that they're alluding to that is awesome. Yeah. Um. Like you said, it it was predictable. Like we knew from the outset that it was going to be they're both the same guy. Uh, I was thrown a little bit because I was expecting Joseph Park to be like the original personality, and Abyss was the construct. But now it looks like with Park Park and Park not existing for the last thirteen years, and maybe Joseph Park is the made up personality. So. That's possible. I mean, it, it could just be the. Uh... You know, the the way they could go it is that, you know, something happened, you know, something occurred that, that changed Joseph Park from this, you know, stand-up person to uh, Abyss, 
right around that time period, but it just he's been he's been abyss for the last thirteen years. Yeah, that's a possibility. So, but overall, I mean, this is intriguing. Uh, I was really uncomfortable with it two weeks ago with the amount of punishment that Park took from uh, the, the the microphone of uh, of Christopher Daniels. But since then, uh, I, I I just think this is interesting enough that yes, it's another sideshow. It's 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 not happening in the ring uh, as far as like match relevancy. But I still think it's it's a good story that they can do uh, to kind of you know break break up the good matches because there are good matches and good stories based on wrestling happening in TNA. You can have one of these things going going on. Yeah, absolutely. This is just one of a few different storylines that TNA has going, and they don't really need matches for it. I mean, you got Joseph Park finally coming to a resolution, and then now they're opening up with the whole Samuel Shaw Christy Hemi deal. Um, I know, the whole serial it, killer stalker aspect there. It's as if it's a wrestling show, isn't it? It's bizarre. Oh come on! <laughs> don't play that card. I mean, if you if you if you if you're gonna do a stalker <laughs> angle, I mean, you, you got to model it off of DDP and Sarah Taker. Oh, the <laughs> I'm coming for you, Sarah Taker, because oh. Taker is the last name. Hey, look, Mister <laughs> Under Taker. <laughs> hey, but the doctor Taker Under. Under, will you sign my program? <laughs> under, under. <laughs> All right, so that is TNA. You guys ready to talk some WWE? I don't know. I'm still interested in talking about Joseph Park. Oh, no, we're definitely moving on. We're definitely moving on. Moving on. Have another pie. We're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Raw happened, and inside that Raw, we got some slammings. We got some TLC. And really the only thing is, okay, is there anything aside from the slammings, which we'll discuss in its own little segment a little bit here, other than the ending from Raw that's worth discussing? Daniel Bryan and Dean Ambrose. Or, I'm sorry, no, Daniel Bryan and uh, Al Hell. Wow. Rowan. Black. Eric Rowan. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, good stuff at the beginning. A lot of energy from the crowd, too, being back home. So that's good stuff. Crowd really racked all night, save one point mm-hmm. that I'll get to later. Yeah, yeah I, think, a- I think I think generally speaking, I mean, we look at the Slammy Award edition of Raw as being terrible every year, but I th- overall, this this episode provided some good matches, uh, good story progression. Um, I think I think the only major issue with it is just placement. You know, I, I'm I'm reading my my Twitter feed and it seems like everyone's like this is supposed to be the go home show, but they're not spending enough time talking about the pay-per-view, despite that's what they did all of last week. And just a placement of the awards and the matches, that seemed kind of awkward because I think they were still doing Diva of the Year. What, wait, they revealed the Diva of the Year after the Wyatts came out, didn't they? I, I think the reason they did that, it was it was awkward. Though. I think you're right. But I think the reason they did that was to get a boost on the voting on the app. I think that's why they did it. So then oh, it no, gives you I, more time. Well. I, I get the, the placement of award and match themselves is just the individual awards and the individual matches. Guys, uh, I don't understand what you guys are talking about. It's the HB Shizzles? Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. My mistake. That was terrible. That was probably the worst bit of Raw. It really was. Yeah. You could even see you could even see HBK looking to the left of the camera where the, all the notes were. You know, for them to read. You can even see him going, D- D- what? what? Oh, <laughs> that show. You, oh, he, you know, he was just like, oh, fuck this. Are, are you no, sure? Are you sure? Did start that before the slammies, though? Are you, are you sure that he was actually looking at, yeah. s- at something, or if that's just how his <laughs> eye appears? At every <laughs> <laughs> you are a bad man, and you will go to hell for that. <laughs> Garvin, you have regained my respect. Whatever you might have lost previously, uh, I think that's was... what we call my friends the Garvin Stump. The, the only, the only <laughs> <better one. laughs> man, he's on fire. Bam. There was, there Can't was literally. Stop. We hope to contain. <laughs> there was one guy on Twitter who literally said that Daniel, that Shawn Michaels should should host the uh, the double cross instead of a double cross award. And, and instead, he changed it to crisscross or well, you know, for his eyes. It's so bad. <laughs> it was all night we were getting that. <laughs> all right. So, uh, but okay, specifically the ending of Raw. I mean, how do you guys feel about it? I mean, do, do you guys, I mean, well, let's not delve too much into the slammies, but uh, the ending, as far as, I mean, if you were on the internet, on Twitter, or on our Facebook page, or anything like that, Epic. the most electric thing that's happened to Raw in probably the last month or so. Yeah, that was freaking awesome. Fantastic. There, there's nothing else to say. 
it was it was an amazing ending, having all those guys in the ring, and then both guys I thought delivered a really good promo. Cena's was unbelievable, but I thought Orton did a really good job as well. Um, you, you know, we've talked about how we've wanted, to, you know, we thought maybe he could make some progression as a heel. I think it's definitely happening, uh, and I think uh, I think Orton did a really good job. Man, that was good. That was just. I mean, it was like, you know, it almost like cleaned out the closet a little bit, aired some of the dirty laundry, you know. I mean, sometimes you just, you know, you know, get the truth out there and let's do this, and man, that was good. What was everyone's favorite bit? I'm curious, because there was that much going on. Uh, Cena probably, embracing the hate at the very end. Say that again? Cena embracing the hate at the very end. Yeah. I, I, have, to, I have to be honest. I, I think the crowd were the best. I, I can't crowd they, they was, were just, was good. Yeah. That 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 moment when Triple H had to stop was probably one of the best moments in a long time. You could see it. You could see it. You could see it. you saw HBK come to the front and literally trying to get everybody to calm down. He got sent back by Stephanie, <laughs> and Stephanie just gave him an evil glare. It's hilarious. I mean, it's one crowd. moment though. Channing boring during Randy Orton's promo. Yeah. Was bullshit. <laughs> was bullshit. That was a very good promo by Orton. But. Yeah. But he overall, did not deserve that. he deserves some props yeah. from the crowd. They kind of shut up after a little bit. I think they kind of realized yeah. it, but still, no, but they, they, you, you got to recognize a good promo when it's going on. That was sure. a good promo from Orton. But so let's be honest the, the crowd the crowd was not attacking that specific Orton promo. They were attacking get, the idea yeah. that once it, again yeah. we're getting Cena versus I get that. Orton. That's correct. I, I get that's that. The one. I get that, and that's fine. But it was still a good promo from Orton, and he didn't deserve that. I, I, I get the overall point, but you know, it still seemed more of an attack on him than it, the, than it the, was more like because they didn't do it through me. Cena at all. So you know, I that. But I, I get what you're saying, well, but he still didn't deserve that. Well, but it's just a knee-jerk reaction. Whether Orton opens his mouth, you gotta take some time yeah. to get over that. Yeah, and and let's also. Remember that the reason why they didn't do that for Cena was because Cena didn't just start into his side of the promo. He went over and he pulled Daniel Bryan over Cena to, to get the crowd involved in that side of things. Very clever. Yeah, well, that's very, gonna, very he's the face, and that's going to help. Orton doesn't have anybody to do that with. I mean, you know, the, let, let's be the, fair here. If he, I mean, if you pull Vicky is... Guerrero over, so they'll just boo and you know not say anything. Okay, but she wasn't in the ring. The problem is, though, what you have with Orton is that the fact that up until last night it had been the same shit from Orton, the same absolute. It was pretty boring. Let's be honest. Till last night, the same boring stuff. You know, it's Randy Orton. They're, they're not making him look pretty. Any, they're not, in fact, they're not making him look good at all. Up until that point, it was only, you know, they started chatting boring about 15, 30 seconds into his promo, so they were just expecting the same shit to come out of his mouth again. That's why they started chatting boring. But it didn't happen. And no, then, then we get the freaking, then we get the freaking tease of Daniel Bryan versus HBK, which would be phenomenal <laughs> unless HBK came back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that, did everyone see um, when Triple H was saying, um, when, when Stephanie introduced Triple H, and Stephanie said something like, and the pinnacle of all these champions is my husband, Triple H. That's just a, put the WWE just zoomed right in on Triple H. Behind him is CM Punk just putting his head in his hands going like that. It was so good. Oh, it was and, then, and then for the ladies, Punk without pants. Oh, that was crazy. <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. What the fuck? I, 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 like he literally like they they invited out Johnny Ace, um, Stephanie, Booker T, D Daniel Bryan, all to do spinnerudos. Then they invite CM Punk out, just comes out in pants and his hoodie. It was ridiculous. It was crazy. That was after Raw. Yeah. But, okay. So that was the ending of Raw. By and far, one of the most amazing things that uh, probably has been put together by WWE in a while. At least given their track record lately. Uh, the bar was pretty set low, and it feels like they could stride again. Now let's go to what we're... <laughs> Man, this is going to lead to so many arguments. <laughs> the Slammy Awards. I do want to do a couple things. Uh, one, uh, we... Of all the Slammy Award winners out uh, in that entire night, which I, I can't imagine how many there were, but uh, out of all of them, only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that includes what was on air and in pre-show, eight had nothing to do with the Shield, Daniel Bryan, or the Authority. Eight. That's mm -hmm. it. Everything else revolved around those three things. 
arguably those three people. Does anybody see a problem with this? Is it the idea? Because let's face it, the Slammy Awards aren't really real. I mean, they're not like popular vote or anything like that. It's built to push something. So, Garv, what, how, do, how do you feel about that, well, that fact? Well, well, just to put that number in context, it's eight out of, I think, 23 awards that had nothing to do with with those three. I, I think I think that's 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 pretty big. And, you know, we look at, like, we have to trust that WWE is doing this legitly. Um you know that's that's what all the stories are saying right now, but I think that that is something. Uh, it's it's very important because it shows that the time that WWE has devoted to the Shield and to this uh, authority angle and and the whole Daniel Bryan thing that it it has paid off because the fans are into it. You know we we do criticize that that we don't like what what the authority angle has been doing in general, like. All of the work they did with the big show, this John Cena versus Randy Orton match. But, you know, overall, we, we apparently are in the minority in, in, in thinking that it's been, it's been rough. Uh, I think, I think that I agree with you that we're in the minority. Totally agree. But I think, I still think the majority of people haven't really been getting into the authority angle as much as what WWE say or do or whatever they tell or whatever. But I, I I agree we're in the minority here. Totally agree. But I don't think that many people like the authority, especially. I mean, I, I know I know he was in his hometown, but the whole Daniel Bryan chant yesterday, you know, that, that's that's just ridiculous. That was absolutely ridiculous. We we had to stop and roll for two minutes for that. I think they're more interested in him than they are in anyone on that roster at the minute. Anybody. Yeah, no, I, I and, and again, yeah, it's it's not necessarily the the angle that people are liking, but what's being built off of it, which is Daniel Bryan, the Shield, and uh, and, and really the Rhodes. At one point, uh, it seems like they've kind of fallen off. They're not as important anymore, but they still were were you know got got major props in the Slammys. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think I think the Shield have been a highlight though this year, though, haven't they? They've, they've never. I don't think they've ever had a bad match have they, this year. I mean, if anybody can pick one out. Well, has the Shield have had any bad match? You can't think of any. Can no. you know they've always been? Not really. You know the the least thing they've had is you know they've been average, which you know is better than you know half the crap that we see. Well, there's normal, no live so. event footage of uh, Roman Reigns <laughs> tripping over the top rope, but <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, even, even even that would win. You know, <laughs> it was damn funny that though. <laughs> but um, All right, you know. So, uh, one. I was just going to say, you know, it, it, it's almost probably at the end of this year the, the perfect time for them to split, in my opinion, as well. I, I genuinely do think that they will make money off them splitting now. Yeah. Okay. Joe, what, what do you think? I mean, when you think eight out of uh, 23 actual awards uh, given out for the Slammys, uh, do you think that's an obscene number? <sighs> eight out of 20. Uh, it's, it is pretty obscene. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm just looking through this list of awards, and I don't know. It's yeah. sorry, I I don't really have anything to say on it other than yeah. Uh, Nick, I do yeah. kind of I do kind of take okay. exception to Shawn Michaels winning double cross of the year. That wasn't a double cross. As he he didn't voice a preference one way or the other between Orton or Bryan. And to pick Shawn Michaels over Mark Henry and that beautiful retirement speech, I mean, that's that that's you prime. know why. I know why. You know why people it's vote just, about it, because... it's it's horrible. Not relevant. Uh, Nick is exactly right. That was just terrible. I mean, nobody saw that coming and just plants him in the middle of the ring. Henry was awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, you know, eight out of 23, that's a third of the awards or just a little bit over a third. I mean, that is a lot. So yeah, a lot that doesn't have to do with, I mean, it's, it's eight. I mean, you're thinking 15 awards just for this, just for 15 awards for the shield, Daniel Bryan and the authority. That's all. I mean, it, it's just kind of amazing when you think about it. All right. So guys, uh, let, let's look at this one. Out of all the Slammy Awards, if you, when you look at the list, is there one that you were like, yes, that one makes sense. That one was awesome. I'm totally in agreement with that one. Um, in total agreement, superstar of the year, Daniel Bryan. Yeah. I think that, that yeah, that, that would that would be it. my vote as well. Not quote of the year, that's mine. Dusty Rhodes. 
I'm in my boy's corner and I'll be your That's, Huckleberry yeah. all night long. That is the so one quote that we that we spent a couple shows on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, between that uh, superstar and fan participation, I think those are the three most deserved. I mean, I'm go- I've got to go with uh, got to go with match of the year. I mean, I thought the Rock and Cena fought a great match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that English humor! <laughs> You're gonna call us out about talking about this part, man. <laughs> They see Lee trolling. They be Hayden. Uh, Joe, you're sus- you're suspiciously quiet here. Uh, wh- if you look at any of these, which one do you like the most? Out of out of all these slammies, mm-hmm. out of every single one. I mean, I mean, the easy one to give away is definitely the beard. Uh, the year. I, I don't Hashtag know. Man. The, come on. Uh, what what you're saying that there could have been anybody else who would who would have seriously won beard of the year? Luke Rowan. Dude, no. uh, the Wyatt family has epic beards. I mean. All of these could have really had had. I mean, there's there's something else in this list that 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 could have won the award. Beard of the year, sure, because Daniel Bryan's popular, but it and you know, no offense to Daniel Bryan, but he does not have the best beard in WWE. AJ Lee. No, Vicky Guerrero's beard is bigger than AJ Lee's. Um, uh, no, my I think I think the one that I found most fitting was the lull moment of the year, the rock the rock rock concert. I hate that. I, I I think that's the one that's the most fitting, though. I mean, it was a funny moment. Outside of anything, you you take it outside of build up for Rock vs. Cena because it had nothing to do with Rock vs. Cena that particular moment. But I think that moment was hilarious. The, Vicky Guerrero played that shit to a T. Yeah, no, props to her on that. It was. It was okay. That's let's, no, it's fair. All right, let's flip it on its head. The one that you absolutely hate, when you're like, you got to be kidding me. This is who you chose for this one, and not match of the year. I want to set that one aside. All right, we're we're, we're not touching that one, um, guys. If you had to pick the one that you absolutely hated, that you that you were like, this is this is the dumbest thing in the world. Well, to to be fair, I mean, I'm I didn't watch the pre-show, so I didn't see most of 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 these handed out. But I think for sure, like as far as the one that upset me the most on Raw, outside of match of the year. Was the uh, the fan participation? I I think I think the the Fandangoing should have won that just because it was the one that has transcended WWE. Yeah, but I mean, how long did that last? I mean, yeah, I think Nick's right. I think I mean as much as I love it, I mean you know it's it's not really every week, is it? You know, it's not. It's it it doesn't happen everywhere. You know, there's only select people that do it. But I think if WWE would have had control of that, so I mean, I think they that Fandango would have won to try and spread out the awards a bit. But no, I mean, I think the Yes Chant had to win. The Yes Chant has been just crazy for most crowds. See the one, the one to me that the Slammy that was I think the most offensive here was Tag Team of the Year. I don't think Gold Dust and Cody were Tag Team of the Year. Uh, I mean, you could have definitely put the Usos up for that. You could have put up the Shield. The yeah. Shield uh, makes more sense than the Usos. The Usos, yeah. what have they done? Yeah, well, they've right. been winning more matches than they've lost recently. I'm pretty confident I mean, they're they've always... won two number one contendership At... matches and haven't done anything with either of them. You may as well but, put Ryback right and but still, but still, as a two man tag team, they did great. You, I mean, you had the Shield always in three man tag team matches. As, as far as tag teams, that the way we like to look at them. They 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 are the tag team of the year because no everyone else is just some random guys thrown together outside of the shield. But yeah, no, I I agree with that in in some respects. But wins and losses, the Usos didn't do much. Yeah. I, I think I think there's two awards that I'd argue, but I, I can understand why they got voted. First one has got to be Diva of the Year. I understand why everyone voted for the Bella Twins. You know, they're they're the most popular divas on the WWE. There's there's no real argument about that anymore. But really, I mean, Diva of the Year, the Bella Twins yeah. won Diva. No, it's, I don't it's, take exception to that so much as I do Eve Torres handing them the award and then hugging them. Yeah. She fired them. Yeah, but no, one, but no, one, no one remembers that, come on. Well, Nick does. No, no, no I mean, is that WWE, WWE don't remember, remember, remember Chris Jericho. I'm just surprised. I'm just surprised that Road Dog and Billy Gunn didn't win Tag Team of the Year. I mean, because they, you know, they yeah. were on TV twice. <laughs> that was some coming gimmick out, infringement, out, by the way. Coming remember? out the Dumb and Dumber tuxedos, that was awesome. 
but they did not pull it off as well as Kaz and Daniels. Let's be honest. Yeah, I was about to that say that, yeah. Yeah, it was epic. Uh, also, oh, another, boy. another one, I mean, okay, let's, let, let's continue. I'm sorry. Insult of the year was not Stephanie the of the year. going after uh, Big Show. That was like a Zeb blip Coulter on the got, radar with everything else that happened that year. Zeb Coulter got robbed. Yeah. Hard. <laughs> I think CM Punk didn't didn't really deserve. I mean, CM Punk looked surprised as hell when he won that award. That taking out Heyman was extreme. That was was pretty stupid. Well, but but at and and that's that's tough because it's extreme moment of the year. But there has not been an extreme moment this year. Like that was a small pool of un uh, of of moments that didn't even really fit that bill. There was a guy on Twitter arguing with me about that, about the fact that that Ryback versus Cena didn't win it. And I said to it, and I had to say to him, like, dude, you know, Cena got up like five minutes after he speared him through that, don't you? They, yeah, that, WWE would, actually, no. that would have looked a lot more impressive if the camera angles had been more oblique and we could have believed it had actually been a solid object. Yeah, yeah, and and the fact that that it was a last man standing match and Cena was down for ten, but they said no contest, and then Cena got up five minutes later, not refusing to go in an ambulance, completely just diffusing that moment. But that's another story. Um. So two two moments that weren't included in this that I think could have really gotten traction. The first is Paul Heyman attacking CM Punk with the ladder and the, and the Singapore cane. Yeah. That was extreme. It was more extreme than the actual winner. Yeah. The other was when Brock Lesnar ran f- face first into the ring post that first <laughs> that first night in uh, Oh in yeah. This year. And just I forgot all about up. that. <laughs> that was hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> what is no, but that? of the nominees listed, I really think why it's taking out Kane should have won because I think that was the only one of those where it actually resulted in somebody being taken off TV, like immediately the match after. Yeah, but then he came back and not not, and then just they just completely ignored it. <laughs> well, it's and, been I a mean, while. Though. And catch yes. for catchphrase of the year. Why could we not have had Brock say something stupid? <laughs> yeah, yes. that, that's that's well, true. No, he that. said it once. It that was good enough. Well, that it was, was good enough for uh, it. Uh, I give that quote of the year. I, I could see that become a catchphrase if they were gonna keep pushing them <laughs> like that, man. That'd be okay. great. Yeah, I, be I great. could see that. I I agree with you there. Just just going back to the things that we actually agreed with, just for a minute that we just missed off. The best crowd of the year. I don't think there was any doubt. No. Was that? Yeah. There was any doubt? They were phenomenal. And that does oh. not belong. Half of that does not belong to the UK. That it just does wrong. belong to the UK. You're so wrong. That, she's, she's right. You might have made up half right. a percentage she of the audience, right, maybe. I'm being generous there. Nick, she was right. She was so right. It, we belong. She, we, we need half that award. I don't know this uh, using so Tommy Lee Jones to defend your English superiority automatically disqualifies you. Look, she is clever, okay? She's clever. <laughs> and she's good looking. You can't lose in that situation, you know? A good looking girl wrestling fan. You can't argue with that, okay? Yeah, you can. Well, not she with can that logic. Wrong. You can't. You can't argue with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can still be wrong. You can't argue with that. Just because you can't. It's impossible. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Oh, you can. It's weird to start pulling the quills out. Real, real quick. Uh, another award that that I think was handled uh, improperly was uh, the trending now hashtag. Like if they were really looking for the the top trending hashtag, why they they shouldn't have left that up for a vote. They should have actually looked at the numbers. Yeah, but that, then that that would be the idea. That would be the whole purpose of the slamming, wouldn't it? Well, then it would just be hashtag Ask FTW, and really they don't want to promote <laughs> us. So <laughs> since we do apparently do all their booking for them, <laughs> no, then it would have been hashtag WWE logic. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, before we continue, I want to take a brief uh, moment for a quick commercial break. This episode of FTW Podcast has been brought to you by FansTalkWrestling.com. FansTalkWrestling.com is our home for wrestling news, rumors, opinions, and open discussions, all available for you live on the Internet. FansTalkWrestling.com is your soapbox and your community, so get in and start a discussion. So, this Sunday, folks, we have it. WWE TLC 2013, including the match that we thought, well, that I personally thought, me personally thought, was never going to happen, and that is the title unification. We can get that later. But we're going to start at the top of the docket, work our way down. 
Uh, first thing on the card here, we have the kickoff match between Dolph Ziggler versus Fandango. Uh, how are you guys feeling about this match? Are you happy with how these things, how this, um, the potential here? Who are you gonna pick? That kind of thing. Joe, you're picking Ziggler. I'm gonna take Ziggler. Uh, Fandango doesn't exactly need a win because the fans dance to his theme. I mean, he's a good enough heel, but they're gonna just make the crowd happy to start the show, and Ziggler's gonna win. Can I just ask, so, where has this, where's this match actually come from? Uh, both guys were available. Cheese. Hashtag WE Logic. Yep, um, they, they, they were both no, no, But, but Harrison, Harrison was literally going to say, you know, he was going to say something like, um, oh, so how do we feel about these two feuding? They're not feuding. They're not, they're not, well, I was going to say the build, but there isn't a build. This is a yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the only, thing, the only thing that I think is wrong with this match is that the Miz is not involved because this is the Miz's, Miz's part of the show. <laughs> the only thing wrong with this is that it's not Tyson Kidd versus Fandango. You continue that total divas feud. Uh, that's a good point. That's a very good point, actually. There's a build to that. Did, did anyone think, by the way, on Raw, when, when all the world champions were in the ring, there was Carly and the Miz there, and everyone was just like, great world champions, the Miz, Carly... <laughs> It's legit. <laughs> they are course. champions. Uh, Garf, who are you taking? Uh, I actually like Fandango. Um, I think uh, just looking at how they've booked Dolph as of late, um, I could easily see F- Fandango going over. Uh, but this this will be interesting. I, I I I'm actually looking forward to this match just to see what they do because. These two guys are, are victims of circumstance. They both lost their push because of concussions. So this is like the first opportunity that we have for them both to move up and do something. But they have to go through one another. But I'm going to go with Fandango. That's that, that's my pick. Okay. That would be okay. awesome if it was booked that way. It would be awesome. <laughs> Kev, you're uh, you're agreeing with uh, Garvin on this one. You're taking Fandango. Yeah, I am. Which you know goes against everything that I say. Don't say I that. Hate don't say Fandango that. Fandango so don't much. Don't say it, Kevin. Don't say uh, it. Don't say what? I hate Fandango because he sucks. I no, hate I, I you. see. I, I Joe says that he has nothing to gain. I disagree. I don't think you want him to fall into the Ryback trap of not having won anything major because eventually the dancing wears off, as you just said. So I, I think that's exactly why you need him to win a decent match. So I think Ziggler would be a good guy to have him win against. Uh, I think I think Fandango has more to gain here uh, because they, for whatever stupid reason, want him to be relevant. Uh, so that's why I'm picking him. I think he's going to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, as as Chris says in the live chat, he did beat or Fandango did beat Jericho. Debut yeah, pay per view match. That was most at WrestleMania. Oh, that was yeah. WrestleMania. There hasn't been much since then. I, I think at some point you got to have a win another match. Look, let's be honest. You know They want to kick off. They, they, it's in the name. They want to kick off the show. They want people to buy the match. They're not doing anything. There's no build. Dolph Ziggler's the fan favorite. He's going to win. Come on. This is, this is just basic. I mean, well, I love Fandango. They're starting something here, you leave. They might be starting a feud. We don't know. Anyway, uh, How, getting to the TLC. <laughs> well, no, go. Uh, if, look. Being, as, being as I went seven for seven in the last pay-per-view... <laughs> Uh, I'll I'll come back here the next time and bone Lee in the ass when I go seven for seven again and get to shove it in his face. <laughs> so there. If you you're go. gonna bone him in the ass, you probably shouldn't shove it in his face too. Hey, can come we, on. He gets, can, can we just replay really that last thing. thirty seconds? So so is is that the preview for the drunk show? I Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when is the Crown Royal podcast? Is that next week? It's, gotta be next it's week. not right now. Are you sure it's not right now, Kev? It's not <laughs> right now. This would be the Budweiser podcast. Oh, <laughs> I know. I, wait, I got leftover Budweiser from Thanksgiving, so I'm trying to polish it all off tonight. Why did you buy Budweiser? Possible. What is wrong with you? Because my dad was up here. He doesn't give a uh, shit about good beer. He just wants Budweiser. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not going to waste sorry. good beer on him if he doesn't want it. He's just like, just buy Budweiser. So I did. I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Can, we, can we all just stop talking for a minute? I've just been told I'm going to get boned in the ass, and you're worried about what beer you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> There's the show opener. <laughs> <laughs> Wyatt family versus Daniel Bryan. Uh, wait, I guess wait, 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 wait. I'm oh, sorry. We've got we've got results in the Facebook poll. Oh yes, let's, let's bring that into the conversation. Yeah, uh, uh, in our Facebook group, um, which you can find on our website, Dolph Ziggler versus Fandango. Um, it's like twenty to two that Dolph Ziggler is going to win. Well done. So, 
It's literally hooligans versus admins in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Wyatt Family versus Daniel Bryan. How are you guys feeling about the build for this one? And do you think that Daniel Bryan could uh, squeak this one out? This is this one's tough, as is the the next match, which is CM Punk versus the Shield. Uh, it, it's just so difficult to to pick. I mean, you've got ways you can go either way. So, yeah, it's okay. really hard. I, I do want to say, I, I do want to say before we before we dive into this one, I, I do want to say, is it weird that I kind of wanted them to combine this into one match, Daniel Bryan and CM Punk versus the Wyatt Family and the Shield? Well, it's I thought that's weird. the way they were going to go. Yeah, it's not weird, but I do feel like that would that would hinder uh, well, what's going on with the shield right now, especially. Yeah, I can see that. I, I mean, I don't like the idea of combining it, but uh, on the other hand, I'm thinking Daniel Bryan and Punk in the same match where they're the underdogs. That's gonna that that would ignite any crowd. Yeah, uh, I, I think if they if they did that though, Nick, if they did that, then they could easily if it's an elimination match, they could easily just just take the shield out. You know, no, they could, you know, and they all like mix up together. You know. One of them gets DQ'd. You know, it'd be very easy to tell the story, but the problem is they haven't got enough matches to fill out. That's why they've been separated. I think. Well, I think this is where if they're not gonna break up the shield outright, they're gonna do everything but. So if you combine them all into one match, that kind of detracts from it. That's a very good point. That's a fair point. Okay, so the matches as they are booked: Wyatt Family versus Daniel Bryan. Uh, we got Nick, Rob, and Kevin picking Wyatt Family. Uh, Nick, why are you taking Wyatt's on this one? Um, ultimately, I do think Daniel Bryan is going to move toward the Wyatt family. Uh, if he doesn't join them outright, um, I don't know. It's hard to put into words because I do see the Wyatt family coming out of this on top. Whether that actually does result in a in an actual victory, like one of the Wyatts pinned Daniel Bryan, I think that's almost secondary because I, I see the Wyatts winning out over Daniel Bryan in some form. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with Nick. Um, I, th- I think the Wyatts, I think you, because you've got two handicap matches, I've, I don't think Daniel Bryan and CM Punk are going to win both. I think there's got to be one where, so, where the face loses as such. And I have more, I can see why CM Punk would beat the Shield as to more why than Daniel Bryan would beat the Wyatts. I don't think Daniel Bryan's going to join the Wyatts, but I do think that the Wyatts are going to win. Uh, I think Daniel Bryan's going to win this one. Uh, it may be by DQ, uh, but I think Daniel Bryan will win. I don't think with as much of a pop as Daniel Bryan gets and how big the crowd reaction is for Daniel Bryan to join him up with the Wyatts or for the Wyatts to get the uh, the upper hand and you know brainwash him or whatever the hell they're going to do, uh, you know, absorb his beard into theirs. I don't know, but whatever they're gonna do, I I think I I don't think it's the right time yet. Hang on, I'm I'm jumping ship. Uh, something Joe said just occurred to me. Uh, Daniel Bryan wins by beating one by beating one of the by beating either Harper or Rowan, and then he joins the Wyatt family. Like he becomes Bray Wyatt's favorite son. No, shut no, up. No, no, no way. There's no way. No. No, nope. there is sorry, no Nick. way no, you would date a random watch. Hey, the, the I'm seven and seven on the last pay per view too. So, I'm <laughs> oh, gonna... listen to the pair of you two. <laughs> okay, here's my thing. I never I... said Brian. Could All right, you win. guys I can think... both fight over who gets to pound Lee in the ass. I, 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 think, <laughs> I think the Wyatt. <laughs> I think thanks the Wyatt so will win, but there's no way you have him join the family now. Yeah, that's not happening. Here's my thing. I'm not sure who to pick on this one, either Brian or the Wyatt, because on the one hand, Daniel Bryan getting the win. Uh, it works really well to get the crowd going and, you know, get the yes chance going and everything like that. However, the Wyatt family haven't had any kind of a loss since they came. And I think the idea of them being supernaturally good and that kind of, like, weird, mis- like, mysterious thing they got going on, I think winning is one of those things that it needs to have happen. So, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm torn on it, but I'm leaning more towards the Wyatts on this one. I think Daniel Bryan needs to lose because I think Daniel Bryan losing isn't the end of the world because the crowd's still going to cheer for him. Uh, and they cheer for him even more when he's the underdog. So him losing and you know coming back from that is a lot more interesting story than the Wyatt family losing and then what? Yeah, um, I don't know. Let me let me just play devil's advocate here. Like I hate Nick's thought, generally speaking. 
But <laughs> at the same time, uh, I mean, we never expected WWE to not have Daniel Bryan, who is the most over guy ever, uh, in that top story, and they totally took him out. They've totally went the different direction. So it's not out of WWE logic to continue to hold Brian out of that and have him join the Wyatt family and be a part of this this story that does pull him away from there. However, at the same time, uh Chris Coates in the live chat threw out the idea that, you know, what if one last plea before the match starts, Bray Wyatt says, We we will lay down arms if you join us. Brian agrees and they they lay down for him. And then you have then you have Brian a part of the Wyatt family, and where I think that works and still fits within the lot in our hopes of where they're going to take Brian is if Brian is a part of the Wyatt family. Now you have a firm backing for Daniel Bryan against the Authority, and that is something that has not occurred the entire time during this. I mean that that's a great idea, Garvin, and I mean even if Chris Coates actually. No, I mean, you're, I'll take credit. you're the one who brought it to the table. Like, you're on the show. Backing that up. <laughs> yeah, right. you're on the show, Garvin. You get the credit. <laughs> yes. But that's <laughs> a, that's a great <laughs> idea, but I, I would think Brian would almost have to almost become the leader with Bray yeah. being his advisor. Yeah, that's how that would play out. Well, the uh, problem I, is, I, I think the thing that makes the Wyatts so interesting is the idea that Bray is leading them. He's got that weird charisma. It fits with Harper and Rowan. And second, you take D. Bry and put him in the front. It just doesn't work as well. well At least, but as it stands Bray right now, Wyatt, Bray, Bray Wyatt can can play that manager role. So you've got the two heavies in in Eric and Luke, and then you have Daniel Bryan as the main star. I think I think uh, you I, can still do it. That's exactly think, what they did down in NXT when Harper and Rowan were doing the tag titles. Bray true. Wyatt put the interests of the family first. And let me pull up this article I wrote on this very subject. To prove that I had this idea first, I'll post it here in the chat. Listen to this ego. He's actually. I think this is an FTW first. You actually are citing uh, the sources that you have. This is my reference point, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yes. All right. So okay. This, this was writ. This was written today. Uh, five minutes ago. No. Uh, <laughs> December fifth, anyway. two thousand thirteen. So you didn't have this idea like. I, Light years ahead of anybody. You had this like last week. No, I, th- I think you're all just over- I said first you're over- analyzing this. That's all. <laughs> all right, it's a good idea. We got it. Okay, well we do have to move on. Uh, Kev, have you given your opinion? You're taking the Wyatt family. Yeah, I, okay. I, I just, I don't see what Dane O'Brien has to gain. I think it strengthens the Wyatt what they're trying to do. And, and Harrison, I think you're exactly right. Bray, Bray's the leader. He has this sort of mastermind complex behind what he's doing that's reason enough that you can't add Daniel Bryan to the mix. Uh, I mean, is somebody else? Possibly. Uh, you know, but Daniel Bryan, no. Okay. Uh, moving on to S.H.I.E.L.D. versus CM Punk, the other underdog versus the three guys that are pissed off at him uh, match on the uh, TLC card. Uh, do you, where, where are you guys landing on this one? Do you think... CM Punk can pull this one out and take down the shield. Do you think it hurts the shield? Or like we were alluding to earlier, this is going to be the cracks in the foundation of what the shield you know become when we start rolling these guys out. Uh, I'm I'm thinking. I mean, Punk's going to have a great standing. Don't get me wrong, but I think uh, Reigns is going to pick up the win. I, I I think that's going to be Punk will end up destroying Ambrose and Rollins, but Reigns is going to be the uh, the cock block there. I don't know. I see Punk uh, taking advantage of Ambrose basically torpedoing his own team by uh, trying to be the top guy and Reigns and Rollins turning the back on him. I don't don't think the the turn will happen at TLC. Um, I think they may wait till the Royal Rumble for that. But I do think CM Punk will win and they'll tease the Shield split up even more. All right. Kev, what do you think? Um, I'm taking Punk. I think... all right, if they're getting into this fracture angle when they split up the shield and they want Punk to kind of be the catalyst, which it seems like to me, that's the reason they're going to win. I don't like them doing that because I don't think they should split up the shield yet. Not yet. So I don't agree with this, but I mean, that that appears to be the path they're going down. So that's why I'm taking Punk. Okay. Garth, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not ready for the shield to 
to break up yet. I mean, overall, we've seen a, a lot of success with the Shield, but they they really stuttered. They they haven't developed that team uh, as individuals yet. And yeah, that this could be the catalyst. The breakup could be the catalyst. But I think there's just way too many things you could still do with the Shield, especially because they're winning Slammies for Faction of the Year. Uh, for the breakout stars of the year, I, I think I think generally people would rather see the Shield stay together. Yes, they're alluding to the breakup, but I don't think it's going to happen yet. I don't think it's going to happen now. I'd give it to WrestleMania. I think I think they're going to pull the match. There'll be some match then. I think uh, they'll go into. That's when I think it's going to really happen. And I think there'll be some kind of I don't know what it will be, but it'll be a triple threat match between them or Roman on one side. But I, I definitely think they'll be done by me. Yeah, I mean, just because we've seen some uh, some signs of them not being on the same page for a couple of weeks doesn't mean we need to break it up right now. I think I think I, I, I think we can we can drag this out a little longer. I think you guys are understating what's already happened. I mean, Reigns and Rollins left Ambrose to die in the ring on Monday. I don't think you can drag that out till WrestleMania. I think the match will happen at WrestleMania. I think I think they'll split in the Royal Rumble first. Yeah, I'm with Royal you on that. Rumble does seem the, yeah, that seems better. Yeah, Royal Rumble seems a lot more likely. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Gar, what's the Facebook poll? Uh, well, what, what does the survey say? Surveys? Well, first, let me just say I I am I'm gonna go with Punk. Uh, I think they're gonna they're they're not gonna split up the Shield here, but I think they're gonna still play this up, and they're still going to suggest that the Shield might be breaking up. So that's gonna be a part of it. Punk wins. He he steals it. Um, the Facebook group poll right now has Punk uh, over the Shield as well. We're talking like twelve to twelve to six. So you know, quite quite a few votes uh, over over the Shield. So okay. Moving on to the Divas Championship, we got AJ Lee versus Natalia. Uh, this potentially could be a pretty good barnstormer of a match, really. Uh, guys, where are you landing on this one? Kev, you're taking AJ uh, to basically keep her title for... God, she's had that thing for how long? It's at least five months. She's the only thing interesting in the division. Why take it out of her? Mm-hmm. Ironically, because she didn't Nat- want because Natty White is on freaking Total Divas. <laughs> and she's the only one who can wrestle. She's not the only one who can wrestle. Initially, I was thinking Natalia would take the belt from AJ here, but last week, or not last week, uh, this Monday, when she beat Tamina, yeah. uh, I can't remember who gave me the who gave me the idea in the live chat, but I was thinking if Natalia loses somehow, I'm hoping they would set up a, a sort of long-ish feud, maybe a couple months, where Natalia keeps pursuing the belt. I'd be a lot more interested in that. I am quite tempted to to go with Natalia. I really am because like she like when she was in when they came to the UK, you know, she broke down and cried for every you know, she lost the title shot. And AJ's held that thing for a long time. A long, long time. And there's there's not a lot really going on, you know, but she got past the thing is she got past Tamina, which suggests to me she's I reckon AJ will probably just retain again, but And she's on the verge of breaking the uh the record for that title, isn't she? A cop that hard, surely. No, the record, the record for the D- okay. If you want to count the women's belt, isn't the record for oh, the women's no. belt? No, no, not the women's don't, belt. Don't, just don't, Divas. Don't, oh, just the Divas? Yeah, she might be. For yeah, I th- the women's belt was like forever. Like, wasn't it back in the eighties? It was held for over a year. Yeah, but just the Divas belt. I remember seeing that it was. It's Maurice that holds it right now, which just blew my mind. Yeah, yeah Maurice, two hundred sixteen days. It's no longer reign than the Miz had as WWE champion. There are benefits to sleeping with Taker, apparently. Uh, oh, that was. Oh no, Maurice, horrible. not Michelle. Oh, not Michelle. McCoy. Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> Maurice. <laughs> Regardless, Although, if Maurice slept with Taker, that wouldn't surprise me. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> he's sleeping. Oh, Miz. No. No. <laughs> I, I feel <laughs> terrible about it anyway. Joe, what do you where you land on this one? You taking AJ or Natalia? Uh, I'm going with I'm going with Natty Light. I think she's going to win it. I, I think because of the Total Divas connection. Uh, she then has a feud with Tamina afterwards, uh, but I think AJ needs to drop it. I, she's held it for too long. There, Other than dropping it, there's nothing else she can do. They don't have anybody else for her to really contend with. Well, if you're going to do a Bella, but, I mean, the only people who should be doing a Bella are CM Punk, or not CM Punk, but uh, yeah. John Cena and Daniel Bryan. 
I, I can see the Bella winning, the Bella winning the title. You know, I really can. That would be so terrible. <laughs> Gar, what do you think? Uh, I'm gonna go uh, as well with Natalia. Um, and the thing is, is you know, I like AJ as champion, but it's very apparent that WWE really doesn't have the interests to push the division. They, they've showed sparks by giving AJ Lee the mic, but that was, you know, a couple of times over the entire reign that she has. So outside of that, they really haven't done anything. And giving the title to Natalia would show that they do want to do something with the title, except, you know, other than keep it on AJ for no apparent reason because she has no real competition. So I, I'm going to go with Natalia. And, um, you know, just, just to tie into the Facebook poll, uh, it looks like the, uh, the Facebook group is also with Natalia winning it. Suppose the thing is, like, has Natalia not had, like, chances before and she's lost? And then she peed her pants. She's lost to AJ at least twice. Yeah. Sure. I mean, but then again, so has everyone, except for yeah. Tamina. Yeah, that's true. That division would need. It it just it just that and, and what you're saying I mean that 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 is the 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 prime example of how WWE is just not doing anything productive with that division they aren't showing that there are other people that there are other women wrestlers on the roster that can can even hang with AJ if they if they oh. put Natalia over in this capacity in a big match not just a a match on on Raw or SmackDown that will show. That there is something else in the division worth uh, worth looking at. I'll have you know that I voted for Eva Marie as Diva of the Year, so I know you, you can imagine my you can imagine my disappointment when she didn't win. I was <laughs> I was important. expecting I was expecting the troll victory for that for sure. <laughs> so the IC belt is up for grabs uh, between Biggie Langston and Damian Sandow. And looking at how you guys have filled in your predictions so far, not a single one he is going to predict Damian Sandow for this one. Uh, Kev, is there a reason why that you're taking uh, Biggie Langston for that? You can't have him drop it this soon. I, I mean, I, I actually think that this has been a decent mid-card build-up, um, and I, I hope they continue this. You, you know, if they have, I could see Sandow winning by, like, DQ, but we pick by who we think is going to keep the belt. And, and you just can't have Biggie Langston drop it this soon. Uh, I, but I definitively could see Sandow winning by DQ, by some sort of run-in or intervention, or the ref gets knocked out or some stupid crap like that. But whatever it is, I, I, I think this should go on for a while as well. I think this could be very compelling for the next couple of months, uh, you, you know, leading up even to Royal Rumble and even possibly past that. So, um, you, you know, I, I, I would, I, I could definitely see Sandow winning, but I think he can't drop the title yet. There's, there's no way. Nick, you agree? I agree with Kevin. Biggie's had the belt for far too little time. Um, I would be interested in a Biggie Sandow feud. Um, yeah, I, I just think there's a gold mine of potential there. Okay, uh, Joe, what do you think? Uh, Biggie Langston's gonna win. He needs to retain the gold. He needs to do something with the IC title. You know, develop his character a little more while holding it. Um, because we really haven't got a whole lot of dimension out of Biggie. Uh, outside of his Instagram account, we don't know a whole lot about Biggie other than he was with AJ and Dolph back when. There's been like not a lot of character development, so I think now is the time to really do it. Uh, throw him on the mic, give him a sandwich, let him talk about eating a sandwich or whatever, like he was doing some of the videos he used to do. Uh, you know, do something, give him a little more time, and use the title to spotlight him a bit. Uh, for me, I mean, yeah, you, you can't take the belt off Biggie Lake like, just, just yet. The problem I have with this is that Sandow, for me, is amazing. Uh, he, he's just got a great gimmick right now. He's been on fire, and I do. I agree that this build between Damian Sandow and Biggie Langston, I hope it's got legs. I think it'd be spectacular if they kept this thing going for a while. Uh, Garb, what do you think? Biggie Langston over uh, Damian Sandow? I I agree with with you guys in that it's way too early to take the title off of Big E. You can do a lot with him, but the the premise that it okay. Let me let me take a step back. It's not too early to take the title off of Big E. I I would like WWE to try something that they haven't done in a long long time, and that is go back and forth between two people fighting for the title. I think you can really do that. 
with Damian Sandow in Big E. They're both great characters. They're both great on the mic. They could really sell that if they're going back and forth. Uh, yes, it would put the, the, the title in a hot potato situation, but it's more of two people going back and forth showing, uh, you know, showing it in, in matches, not, not just, you know, paper champion as you transition to something else, like you normally get with the hot potato. So that's, that's where I disagree with you guys. I don't think it's too early, but overall they can do a lot with Big E. Uh, and, I think this is a perfect spot for Damian Sandow to to uh to fit in as well. So I I personally I'm kind of torn, so let me let me let me vamp for another quick second. Uh the 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 Facebook group is saying Big E Langston is going to win. He's going to retain. Overall, I I think I'm going to have to I'm I'm going to have to agree with you guys there. Okay. So yeah, Garvin, point. if uh, Big E had already established himself as a dominant champ, I would be a, a lot more inclined to agree with your scenario. But I, I I think he needs to build himself as a dominant champ first before he can take chances with that. Yeah, I I think if he loses the title, it's going to make him look silly. Uh, I can't lie. It's going to make him look. It's it's just going to destroy any kind of like half build he's got if if he loses the title. Even I mean a clean loss, yes. But even if it's just like uh you know a cheap loss where he's holding on the ropes or there's something there's another factor happening. Well, I think. The fact that he's still relatively new, that'll just make it look like, oh, he's he's a rookie. He doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, they're, they're not kind of, so much that Damien looks clever. They built him up like to try and avoid that as well. Well, it'll be an interesting match to see. It'll be an interesting match for from my standpoint. I just want to close it out by saying, for me, it'll be an interesting match because I think it gives a lot of implications of where these two are going to go from here on out. Uh, it's one of those, I don't want to say it's make or break for either of these guys, but it's definitely something that'll be interesting to see from a standpoint of if Big E brings the house down, then you know this guy has some legs to it, because this is his first real title defense on a pay-per-view, uh, at least for the WWE. And then for Damian Sandow, he just he keeps hitting that glass ceiling. And for me, it'll be, I hope he breaks through and gets in the main event, because the guy's money all around. So here we are. We are now at the match that I personally never, ever, ever thought was going to happen again, and that is the title unification match between the WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight Championship. And I want to go on record by saying this. If it doesn't happen, I'm not right. So don't. I'm not going to play that card. I'm not going to be like, oh, look at that. I was right in the end. I'm not going to pull that crap out. Uh, as far as we can tell, this is just going to be... I, I, it's a unicorn. I mean, okay, so here we are. The title's going to unify. I mean, guys, where you land on this one? It's going to be Cena who's going to win it if they're going to unify. I agree. He's the Superman. He's 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 the Hogan. I I know we normally take the Iron Sheik on this and say fuck the Hulk Hogan, but between Randy Orton and John Cena, who's more deserving of title for unification? I'm going to say it's John Cena. I, I still, in the back of my mind, have this thing where Triple H no, beats no, them both. Yeah, I do. I I really can see, I I can really see it and I know it's it's so unpopular but like it kind of makes the most sense in a really weird way but like the amount of things they've been putting on Triple H the, you know in Stephanie's little actions Triple H talking you know, the whole focus around Triple H you know uh, I, I I can really stick the see both men going down Triple H climbing up the ladder taking both titles and declaring himself the unified champion I really can see it it's it's bad I know but. Uh, I, I, the, the whole idea of Randy Orton and Cena taking down their own title, I think that's gone now. I think everyone thought that originally, but I think that's kind of gone now. So I can, can really see Triple H, though. Nick, what do you think? Um, I really don't know. Uh, I still really want to say that Jericho could come out and just knock them both out and take the titles, but uh, if I had to pick one, I'd go with Orton. No okay. rationale for that. I, I just I, I have to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, not a problem. Kevin, where are you on this one? Um, I, I, I agree with Joe. I, I you know, I, I, if you're gonna have somebody do this, it, it's gotta be Cena. If it's not gonna be Daniel Bryan at this point, it, 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 you know, I just can't see Orton doing it, particularly with the way they ended things and. You know now this controversy around hitting Stephanie and 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 things and it, it yeah it, it 
I think it's going to be Cena. I just I, I I can't see Orton winning it, particularly if they want to keep him uh, as a as the heel persona, which I hope they do. What What about the ultimate disaster scenario of Cena winning? And then The Rock coming back to challenge it for the Unified Championship for WrestleMania. <laughs> It'll never happen, but that is the ultimate disaster scenario. That, that is, that is okay. the point when I stop watching wrestling. <laughs> you may have to stop watching wrestling because of The Rock's tweet this week. Oh, were we going to bring that into this? No. Do, do you know what? I, I, I thought it no, apparently... No, I've had, no, I've no, had, no. Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. All right, hold on. Let me let me pull it up here. But uh, And I know it's on Wrestling News Source because they'll, put, they'll print anything. Oh, uh, shut up, you dick, <laughs> bastard, wanker, knob, cheese, dick face knob. I enjoy it. Wow. Tell us how That's you really feel. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, no possible. Fucking A. Uh, I can't find it. What was it? It was if, if you do it once, you're considered an anomaly. If you do it twice, you're considered something else. If you do it at three times, it defines you. And it, yeah. <laughs> It's a picture of uh, that caption over an image of Cena and. Uh, anyways, oh, he tweeted that, and I think yeah. somebody put the picture yeah. up. I don't think he posted the picture. Someone added a picture, yeah. Someone yeah. Added. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but so then. How did... many Fast and Furious movies what, has he been in so far? Yeah, pa- apparently it's the third, yeah. Apparently it's also a quote from some a football game that they mentioned the day before he tweeted it as well. Yeah, so okay. there's so, so many choices. I just want to make sure that there's a possibility of it being another Fast and the Furious movie he's referencing. No, I don't think uh, they're going to make any more of those. They'll keep making them. All they need is Vin Diesel. They don't need Paul Walker. They've said they're going to keep making it. Oh, they did? Okay. Yeah, they do. Anyway, uh, all right. So, uh, Garv, now that we have that out of our belt, Garv, this title unification <laughs> match, how are you feeling about it? Um, I'm glad I'm not the only one who is uh, sketchy about about it. About the results, about what could potentially happen, um, you know, outside of the segment that ended Raw, I have not been sold on this match at all because we've been treated <laughs> to nothing but dusty style finishes for the last four or five months. So yeah, I'm 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 coming into it thinking, you know, totally Triple H could add himself to the match. They've definitely implied it so many times that. You know, Triple H is the de facto leader uh, of the world in WWE champions. Um, so I don't know, but if if this does in fact happen, which we have to assume it's going to, uh, John Cena, John Cena is who I, I'm going to pick. Um, and I do want to sure. say that just going back to the Raw, how how this uh, how, how how Raw ended with this segment, um, it was interesting to see. Uh, a somewhat different side of Cena. We normally know where Cena lies. Like we normally know Cena is is the obvious good guy. But how Raw ended, it it did really suggest that possibly, and they've kind of implied this before, that possibly the authority is backing John Cena. Not not going anywhere near the idea of a heel turn, but just saying that it's. It's it's the first time in a while that we we really can't say what side Cena is on, whichever uh, side the hate is on. <laughs> I, f- I think they've backed like John Cena. They've also backed Randy Orton. Uh, to me, that kind of suggests more that Triple H is going over. It really does because they've backed Orton. Now they're kind of backing Cena, and then eventually they're going to screw them both. But like, I I think whatever the match will happen, and if it is a dusty finish, it will happen when both men have like been thrown through 20 million chairs or tables or whatever the hell they're going to do. Yeah. So are we saying this ends with Cena and Orton versus Triple H and Kane? No, no, no. I I, I think it'll go to completely... I think Triple H will take the title, and I think... In a perfect scenario, I would put Daniel Bryan versus Triple H at WrestleMania, but that won't okay. happen. Okay, good, because we were just about this close to being a TNA-only podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gar, what's the Facebook poll say? Uh, <laughs> Facebook poll, as of right now, and uh, this poll is still young. It's only been out for about two hours, but uh, as it stands right now, John Cena is in the lead. So we got John Cena winning uh, this match and taking home the Unified WWE Champ. Actually, Lee, what is the official name now? I thought that's right. It's the Unified Championship. It's not the WWE Unified Championship? 
Well, it could be. They've not. They've, they've not been clear though, because they said on. They said when they made the vote that they were going to consider yeah. what they would call it. And then there was. Yeah. And then the day afterwards, there was talk that they didn't like that name. So why the fuck put the name up on the vote if you don't like the name? Well, because it was it a is. dumb name, and they they probably didn't expect so many votes for it. Well, that's, that's, yeah, it was like <laughs> neck and neck between all three of them. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, the best one. Use the two damn time. The WWE World Championship. World Heavyweight Championship. It would have been funny if there was an option like the WWE Unified World Heavyweight Title oh, Championship. Undisputed Championship of <laughs> the World. World. <laughs> the game. Yeah, there should, there should there's a just... Triple H logo on it. That's all it is. <laughs> the Shovel Championship. <laughs> the Championship. Uh. <laughs> That's it. The Championship. Uh. <laughs> All right, so remaining possibilities for the match that we could have. I mean, remaining matches as far as how, what's possible for the pay-per-view. We have Kofi versus The Miz to possibly continue their feud. Tag Team Championships have not been booked for TLC, but we still have SmackDown to go through. We could have uh, either the Usos, Real Americans, Cody and Goldust, Ryback and Axel. Uh, we also have R-Truth and Xavier Woods versus Tons of Funk. I mean, there's still room on the card for these things to happen. It'll be interesting to see how SmackDown changes uh Changes things. Um, just can, to just you... t- can I just ask, who likes the name Rybaxel? I do. I was thinking Raxel, but yeah, same thing. Ryback, <laughs> that is the worst. What the hell? Even JVL was saying what a dumb name. He came up with a damn thing, but even he's saying what a dumb name that was. Well, they Ryan topped Baxel. it. They topped it with uh, Team Braniel, so it's not the worst <laughs> thing out there anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I. I... I don't like the idea that they have to name every single team. Like even the short-lived Daniel Bryan CM Punk team had a had a name. <laughs> but it was like yeah. it's like that celebrity couple thing where you just take the two names and you smash them together, and that's what like the J like uh like they did with like yeah Benifer like that whole fiasco. So I mean, <laughs> if you're gonna come up with a name, come up with something interesting. I thought the best one was uh, was Skip McGillicuddy. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Skip McGillicuddy sounds like some kind of a protagonist in a Stephen King novel. Uh, yeah, I was like, right, so make get sure... back, Chef Gillicuddy. <laughs> <laughs> so join us this Sunday uh, for the WWE TLC 2013 results and live chat. It should be awesome to hear everybody complain about whatever happens with the WWE and World Heavyweight Championship unification match. <laughs> so that'll be fun to watch. Uh, so make sure you join us for that one. Next up is the Wrestling Sidebar. The Wrestling Sidebar is a fun, family-friendly daily column from our illustrious Garvin, uh, where he asks five questions while linking to various stories or conversations that he's been reading throughout the day. So let's go through a few of these and answer them rapid-fire style. Guys, each one of us gets 15 seconds to respond. Again, 15 seconds. Standard and metric, that's all you get. That's how why we got rid of Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's not the one who goes long on these. It's usually me. <laughs> yeah. The guy who wrote the damn thing is the one who always goes along. Is Chris Jericho being slighted in this undisputed championship build? I'm just going to go right to left on this one. So, Joe, you're up first. Yeah, I think so. I mean, is he personally slighted? I don't think so. But uh, storyline-wise, I could totally see it. I mean, you got to mention Jericho. He was the undisputed champion, not the not the unified champion. No, he was the undisputed champion. There was no dispute. He was the goddamn champion. Nick, what do you think? Yeah, he is being slighted here um, in storyline. If he, if he doesn't come in at some point and at least comment on this, I'm going to be disappointed, bewildered, confused, and enraged, and all kinds of other verbs. Okay. Because we... uh, just to rule out Jericho from TLC, uh, I believe he's in Australia at that point. Um, but he has been slighted. They are completely trying to rewrite history for younger people here. They're, they've they've not even in the video package. They didn't mention him like once. It's crazy. But yeah. Kevin? Yes, totally slighted. This is his legacy. This is what everybody remembers him for. So um, it's I said it the last time we brought this up. I don't like it, and it's not good. Okay, Garvin. Uh, I definitely think uh, there is some something happening. Uh, obviously, WWE wants Jericho to be a part of this. Or maybe not this, but in WWE in general, and he he hasn't tweeted anything about about WWE in a while. Um, yeah, it's it's very obvious that there 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 is something going on because they aren't bringing it up uh as much as they should. 
Uh, I'm going to say no, he's not being slighted, because like Garmin said, they are building for something, and I think it's going to be Undisputed versus Undisputed Champion, and they'll have the Super Undisputed Champion. Just very quickly, they don't bring Chris Benoit up either. I mean, is there something going to happen there? Though? You think Chris Moving right be... along! No, yeah, we're not doing that one. Uh, Chad's yeah, saying, he's yeah. fighting Owen Hart at WrestleMania. Chad is saying... And again, moving right along. Chad is saying, yeah, that he is being slighted. Basically, that's where they're landing on that one. Uh, it is rumored that TNA will drop to three pay-per-views in 2014. If TNA dropped their traditional pay-per-view schedule altogether, would you be disappointed? 2014, Joe, no TNA pay-per-views. You okay with that? <sighs> yes and no. Uh, if they're going to continue trying to build things as super cards, for lack of a better term, instead of free pay-per-view, which it's not on pay-per-view, no matter what the no matter the fact that you're just airing it, it's of special impact. Just like that extra special epi- episode of Moesha. <laughs> it's the same damn time period. <laughs> if you're going to do it, if you're going to make it a super card, give it an extra hour. Can, can you just? Can, I'm, I'm sorry, we're gonna go over 15 seconds here, but can, can you just ref? Can you just reference that for someone who's English and knows nothing about what you just said? Uh, you're gonna have to give it, uh, look up. It was a it was a TV show on UPN <laughs> for like where, two years with uh the singer Brandy. She was the star. Yeah, and every and Joe, episode seemed to be an extra special episode where she did something corrupt. And Joe <laughs> okay. referenced it on a podcast completely out of left field where we were like, Moesha? <laughs> <laughs> and I brought it full circle back to wrestling. It was it was seriously, it was it was like tightrope walking is what it looked like. Uh, uh, Nick, real quick, real quick. Oh, uh, sorry, Moesha was on for five years. Five years? Really? Yeah. Go Brandy. Uh, Nick, go on. Um, If they went... To the uh, the eye pay per view route, where they made things a whole lot cheaper, um, I'd be completely okay with that. But even if they just did TV and nothing else, I don't think that would necessarily be a bad thing. At least not in the short term. Okay, Lee. Depends what we're classing a pay per view as, because I know they're doing a lot of one night onlys next year um, to carry that on. They're filming two in England for a kickoff. Um, in terms of pay per view, though, they don't make any money for TNA, so business wise, makes perfect sense. They make they they actually lose money on it. I don't care what Dixie Cat says; they lose money on it. You heard this from Lee. He knows. Kevin. Um, this is really interesting. Do do I? It would be interesting if they drop them all. Do I want them to know? I guess it's the best way I could put it because it's a way to build. It, it puts something to look forward to, and and. I think less pay-per-views deliver. So I don't want to see it do it, but I'd be interested to see what happened if they did. Okay. Garf? That makes any sense. Yeah. Garf? Uh, as far as dropping pay-per-views, Lee, uh, uh, this, we are talking about canon pay-per-views, so pay-per-views that follow the basic story that TNA is telling. So the one-night onlys would not fit there. I, I think I think they'll right. still do that because that does make sense. I think that is making them some limited amount of money. Uh, but as far as dropping pay-per-views in general, I think it's a good step to go if they're still providing us, you know, more special episodes. Not not just the not just the two hour specially themed episodes of of Impact, but actually giving us a three hour episode of Impact uh, once every th- three four months. I think would would make it better. My yeah. God, that, that week's going to be awful. A three hour Raw, then a three hour Impact, then yeah. a two hour SmackDown. And, and and they'll yeah and they'll time it with one of WWE's pay per views. <laughs> Do we look at more yeah. SmackDown yeah. anymore? Can't yeah. just be Raw recap. <laughs> it really is Raw recap, basically. Uh, yeah, for me, it would be. It, 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 I would only be disappointed if the content that would normally go there got axed. So if we didn't see it on the internet, if we didn't see it on expanded impacts, or if we didn't see like special one night only Saturday editions of Impact that you know were on Spike, and all it means is just that you know every couple months we get a special you know one night only thing that we can all see. Uh, if they dropped it all together, yeah, I'd be disappointed. Um, at least that's for me. Uh, what is 2013? Oh, chat saying chat's being sardonic. They're saying uh, you know if um, uh, if they did, would they get rid of Sting? If they got rid of him, and that's basically where they land on that one. Uh, all right. So, was 2013 a successful year in wrestling, Joe? Sure. Uh, I think so. I mean, we really had the rise of the Wyatts. We had the rise of the Shield. Uh, we had Daniel Bryan become bigger than ever. We've had all kinds of stuff go on. Uh, we've had Sin Cara botch so badly that he's not on TV anymore. He's been replaced. Uh, <laughs> It's been a it's been a good year. We've had a lot to talk about, and we've been positive about a lot of stuff. So 
Okay. All right, Nick. Sure, I'll echo Joe's sentiments. Um, yeah, yeah, Shield, you know. Wyatt's, um, more NXT talents coming up that's deserving of the spot. Um, Aces and Eights had some highlights. Um, a TNA original finally got the title back in AJ Styles. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Lee. Um, I'd have to argue T- this must be this has got to be TNA's worst year, surely. It's got to be. Um, that overall, it's got to be an awful year for them, realistically. WWE, I'd say they did well uh, until about August, and then, as we know, things were just looking bemusing for the last three months. So, so bad changes. Overall, I, I think it's a mix and match. To be honest. Okay. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, this is completely subjective. I will say yes, and a lot of the reasons Joe echo, Joe said. I'll echo uh, the Wyatt family. I'll echo the Shield, a lot of the things they did. And I'll echo the Raptors, Daniel Bryan. But this is completely subjective. It just depends on how you look at things. I will say yes. All right, and Gervin. I don't know how you can look at TNA as being unsuccessful this year. Saying this is the worst year in TNA... Um, I, 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 I totally disagree. There's worse years. We've seen a lot of positives come out of TNA, especially now that we don't have Pritchard, uh, we don't have Bischoff, we don't have Hogan. But overall, we are still fans of wrestling, so we're still in it. I think that, that is the, that is the one sign that, t- that both WWE and TNA are still successful. And 2003 was, or 2013 was a good year because we're all still here. We're still all excited about talking about wrestling. All right. Uh, yeah, for me, it was a successful year. Uh, we had some pretty big um, storylines come out for both companies. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing some stuff doing some game-changing things. As far as TNA goes specifically, I don't know. I mean, jury's still kind of out on that one. That's going to be a lot of thinking for that because on the one hand, they did some – They, I, I personally, I don't know, maybe I set the – I think with TNA, I set the bar too high. I, I think I realized – I thought maybe they should do something – this could be really huge for them, and it just didn't pan out. So I, I, I don't know how that lands. Very very quickly, just to regress, Garvin. I just think business-wise for TNA, this has been the worst year. And I, I just I, I think that, that they started the year well, and it's just gone downhill and downhill and downhill. And then, but you're basing that on 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 rumors and speculation, but no, no, I'm, I'm basing, no, actual... no, I'm not basing that on rumors. No, no, I'm basing it on the wrestling as well. I mean, the quality of the show. I mean, we saw when Pritchard and you know Bischoff went through that all. No, no, that was, we're talking like six, seven months of 2003 here. You know, that was it was some there was some pretty awful television. I'm not defending WWE either. I mean, they've had some god awful. No, I, I, okay, okay. On that, on that side of things, I, I do agree. I think, I think the last hurrah from Bischoff and Hogan were were absolute crap. But Wait, again, I, I, saying this was the worst year, I think, I think is disregarding all of the positives that we did get. Now that we don't have them, especially. No, yeah, say, Tina, no, no. Yeah. Tina didn't have Vince Russo this year, so your argument is invalid. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically about TNA, what does TNA have to do in 2014 to have a successful year in your eyes? Joe? 15 seconds. Just, just blow it I, I know, but it, 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 I really should have read the questions beforehand. <laughs> um, more wrestling. More pure wrestling. Okay, Nick? Um, if I had to pick one, I'd say highlight the X division more often than they are. Uh, restock that division. I think more X division means uh, more success for TNA all around. Okay, Lee. Um, I get better stories, better quality stories, better thought out stories. Um, I would see 2014. In my opinion, is going to be the year of Magnus to see if he's going to make it or not. Uh, for him and I also personally just this is a personal one I would bring back the six sided ring but that's personal that is, that's just me Kev they did so many things that I've been bitching about for so long I only have one left so I'll keep it the same thing give Samoa Joe the push he deserves Garf uh, I, I definitely think it needs an additional hour of programming throughout the week so that we can have more than four matches uh, to talk about each week. Um, and then at the same time, I think, I think they need to really put more focus on the, on the mid card, the, the, the secondary titles, the X division title needs consistent TV time. The knockouts championship needs, uh, some quality competition. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, everybody here has given really good answers that make a lot of sense. It could prove pretty feasible. Uh, mine's going to be kind of out there, and I always wondered why wrestling organizations... I mean, we, we talked about this, I think, once before. I don't know, maybe move to seasons, where instead, where you have a definitive start, 
an end date like a wrestling season, like a professional sport would do, uh, where TNA would be like, okay, this is the start of the wrestling season, then they can still do stuff in the off season. It would just be not as big of a deal. But for me, it really blew the doors off the damn thing. I, I think that, I think they really got to go out and they got to be aggressive when it comes to going uh, after viewers. Um, Impact 365 is a nice step, but they really got to push hard as far as what they can do with the wrestling product. Gar, have you got one more? Uh, generally speaking, just I mean, you know, we we are talking from from our point of view, but I think. Overall, for everyone else to look at them as being successful, I think they need to get ratings up to about 1.5 to closer to 2 before people look at them as being successful. I, f- I think they've had that. We've all, you know, with all due respect to that comment, I think they've had that problem for the past five years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, ever since Hogan, well, I'd say when Hogan debuted, that was the big one. And and that was when it was like, okay, this, this could happen. And then it just never did. So, I mean, it's, it's yeah, they they got to be able to get that kind of rating consistently. Uh, who, I'm sorry, what would you ask for in your WWE or TNA contract? Health insurance. Damn, uh, that was mine. Uh, that was and mine. a guaranteed, guaranteed pay rate. Okay, Nick? Um... Damn, health insurance was a really good one. I can't think of a better one. Very good. Well, I'll give you guys a chance. I'll give you guys a chance to, and I'll, I'll give some context to this. So basically, there was a discussion about not posting spoilers, and it turned into criticism about TNA giving their talent time off the holidays, uh, and which then turned to how much WWE wrestlers make and what kind of perks they get in their contracts, like tour buses, first class. I'm sorry, first class air travel. I mean, you can hold, you can read the entire conversation on the Facebook group. But basically, the question is. You know, if you had clout WWE or TNA and you were looking, you know, when you were up for a new contract, what's the one perk you would want? And I, yeah, I mean, Joe kind of nailed it with health insurance. So, Nick, if you had to give a perk for, and you had WWE by the balls, what would it be? Uh, paid vacation time. The, the idea that um, if you don't work, you don't get paid is, is taken to kind of an extreme in wrestling. So, yeah, I mean, if you got to take time off for an injury like Rey Mysterio did just recently... Um, WWE should recognize that and give you some pay time off. Okay. Lee? Just very quickly, I, I think Rey Mysterio gets paid when, when he's off, by the way. Well, I'm talking, like, generally. But. Oh, right, yeah, okay. not nachos and burritos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not anyway. masks. Um, Yo quiero Rey Mysterio. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder, um, get a bonus when JTG leaves? Just saying. When is JT? On a serious note, when is JTG going to leave? For Christ's sake, it's been like six years now. He's going to be the last guy. He's going to. Can you imagine WWE falling? You know, from the network. Say the network launches, and then they all go bust. JTG still under contract. With fucking WWE. He's the last survivor. He's like He's the, the Phantom of the Opera of WWE. <laughs> He's hiding up in the rafters. It's 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 crazy. Well, I can just see it now. Who do we got left? Damn it! Who do we got left? <laughs> yeah, JTG. Who? That guy right there. Chill. <laughs> You know, I mean, what else do you have, Kevin? Can, can you, <laughs> sorry. No, it's okay, Kevin. Uh, what do you, what do you, if you had to pick? Uh, uh, I would, I, I would require Vince to hand over the name Genetic Jackhammer to me. <laughs> it would be in my contract Kevin? that he could no longer call himself the Genetic Jackhammer. Now that would be me. Are, are you, are you announcing something on the podcast here, Kevin? No, I wish, but okay. no. <laughs> Garvin. <laughs> Yeah, just looking at the answers that we got on the on the actual column, it, it seems like everyone was looking at metal medical coverage. Uh that's that's the obvious one. The one I would go with is uh I would like to be guaranteed six months of consistent T V time so that I have an opportunity to get over and tell my story, unlike everyone else on the roster. That, there's you know, a massive, a massive stage in a wheelchair. That, there's a massive flaw in that contract. When you say six months of TV time, by all means, take WWE superstars. Take the whole damn show if you want that show. Something. Main event, Saturday Main morning event, slam. Yeah. I have it all. You, you get Natalia's months. farting gimmick. <laughs> and I would, get, I would get myself over with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You don't have tits for a kickoff. No, uh, please don't, don't do this. Tits don't do this. Farting. For me, it would be. I would, I would like my contract. Italian. For me, I would like my contract structured like I was a professional athlete, where I'd have a guaranteed amount of money set up front, where you know I get a signing bonus, and then every year I get X amount. So regardless of whether or not I show up, I still get paid, and that would be what I would use to, uh, you know, pay for health insurance and you know, staying alive and things like that. 
actually, the other thing I'd ask for to, uh, for in my contract is to bring back Saturday or Sunday Night Heat. That was a great show. What about Velocity? No, no, not Velocity, not Jacked, just Heat. What about Shotgun Saturday Night? I like Shotgun Saturday Afternoon better. What about Miss TV? That's still airing for some fucking reason. Uh, I, 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 that, that is a great contract now. idea. Uh, maybe maybe uh, the Jericho show. Oh, the Peep Show. Bring back the Peep Show. There you go. That's all. The, the cutting edge. All right. Hang on, guys. Okay, so for Ask FTW, we do have one thing I want to do, and then we'll move on to uh, win, fail. And that is, um, you know, Ask FTW, you can send us topics, you know, email, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Google Plus community, hashtag Ask FTW. Make sure you get your stuff in. Uh, this one went to our email questions at FTWpodcast.com. Mike Rudin saying, last year after SummerSlam, the WWE title ended unclean at every pay-per-view just like this year. Night of Champions was a draw. Hell in a Cell was the Brad Maddox, Steve Masculating, Ryback, if you remember that one. Uh, Survivor Series was a shield interference. Um, it may have been their uh, debut. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that one. That was uh, their main roster debut. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, TLC, uh, Punk had a major injury and he didn't wrestle. So clearly a similar situation is occurring this year. In terms of entertainment level, do you see a difference between this year and last year? Also, do you see this being a trend where WWE uses this method to kill time until the road to WrestleMania that starts at Royal Rumble? Uh, Joe, what do you think about that one? I can see them using it to kill time. Um, I... <laughs> I think that last year, I mean, we had a lot more definitive wins last year, from what I remember. And this year, like you said, we've had a lot of a lot of overbooked endings. Uh, yeah, I, I think last year was a little better as far as finishers go. Okay, Nick, what do you think? Yeah, last year was better than what this year's turning out to be because in that six month span, for all all through it, you had CM Punk as champion. And he was still making it interesting. And in the second half of that, you had the Shield debut. And we also had the question, uh, why are they here? Who do they work for? What are they doing? All that. There was something to hold our interest. This authority storyline has that potential, or at least had that potential, but they've kind of wasted it with the way they've used Brian and Orton. So uh, last, last year was a whole lot more entertaining from my, from my viewpoint. Okay. Uh, Lee? Yeah, if I remember rightly, uh, last year we had uh, Hell in a Cell, it was Ryback versus uh, CM Punk, and no one really knew what the hell would happen. And then, of course, they killed Ryback totally. Um, and then, you know, Survivor Series was pretty bad last year. It was really bad, if I remember rightly. Um, TLC was a massive concern. I, c- I can see what you mean when you compare them. I think this year has been worse, to be honest with you. This year has just been diabolical. You know, Battleground was one of the worst things. I mean, apart from that tag match, it was one of the worst things, I think. One of the worst pay-per-views I, I've seen in a long time. It was such a waste of money. Um, I, I seriously think WWE needs to start mixing it up after SummerSlam. It, it, every year it seems to be, you know, there's a drop-off, there's a drop-off, there's a drop Survivor Series is not as big as it used to be. You know, we've got to think about that. Um, so, they, they need to do something. They need to figure out a more different approach to it. That may be where the WWE Network comes in. Maybe something slightly different between these times. I hope so. Okay, uh, Kevin. You know, you know. I think that Harrison, you, you mentioned the the concept of not having an off season. I, I think this is what we're starting to get with not having an off season. You're getting three months of crap that essentially would be where an off season should be. So I, I, I yeah. I mean, it's. I, I'm worried this is becoming a trend that they're just kind of mailing it in at the end of the year. Um, you, you know, to to get the Royal Rumble on the road to WrestleMania and then heat things back up for the summer. So, yeah, I, I think this is a problem, and I think this is possibly a, you know, a sidebar to to not having any time off and not being able to kind of get creative juices going to just take a step back. Okay, uh, for me, uh, I hope it's not a. Uh, I think it's it's just a coincidence. I really hope that it's not. Uh, something we see year after year, uh, but it is very clear that uh, the WWE, they really gear up for the road to WrestleMania, and it's hard to come up with something when you're focusing so much on that. It's hard to come up with the road to the road to WrestleMania. So for me, I, I, I hope it's not a, it's not a long-term trend, but I'd rather it, uh, maybe it's just, you know, it's just uh, a blip on the radar. Are right, you guys ready for uh, some win fail? Yep. Yes. All right. All right, let's do it up. Women wrestlers aren't getting paid. Why do you do a job? Here is your win. You do any job, any job, and fail. 
is to fucking get paid! Of the week. Wins of the week, your win of the week. Go, Joe. Uh, my win of the week this week is from TNA. Uh, the fact that Zima Ion is the bromance DJ. Uh, I like it because it gives them something to do. They can beat up on the DJ. The guy can take a bump. We know that. Uh, and it keeps a guy on TV. I dig it. Awesome. Nick, win of the week. Uh, my one of the week also comes from TNA, and it was Ethan Carter's uh, finger pin of doom and everything else surrounding that. It was some great heel work from uh, both Ethan Carter and Rockstar Spud. Lee? Well, clearly the last two people who have commented have been on drugs this week because clearly the win of the week is, uh, yeah, fuck you too, Joe. Anyway, <laughs> the, win the, the win of the week is it's kind of the crowd. It's got, I can't understand I'm not American. It's got to be the win of the week being the crowd from Raw. How on earth can you not give it them? They were just brilliant. Absolutely fucking brilliant. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, Kevin. You're I, hate to ever, I hate to ever agree with Lee, but yeah, the crowd on Raw was awesome. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, so I got to I gotta echo the sentiments. I got to say my win of the week was the crowd on Raw. Um, they were just fantastic. It's been a long time since we've had a crowd that good. Uh, way to rock the shit, Seattle. <laughs> Garb, your win of the week. Um, I've got a few. End of Raw, obvious win. Uh, Christian becoming a father. Uh, I think I think that's a nice turn of events. I don't know if you saw the WWE app exclusive, but uh, Christian announced that he became a father during his off time, uh, which kind Very of explains nice. why he's been gone outside of the concussion. Um, also, uh, I do want to make you guys aware that Ethan Carter's win of the week. Uh, according to his tweet to us, <laughs> was that he won. Oh, I did <laughs> like that. Awesome. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> More see, guys need to interact with the fans that way. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he, he, that, that was that was awesome what he did. Uh, for me, win is the CM Punk face plan heard around the world. That thing was epic. Just him in the background. You could just tell. He was just like, oh, my God. And just, <laughs> the, 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 the thing that sold it for me is just that, that the it wasn't like a head shake. It was like a sidelong glance where he's just like laughing and plants his face in there. It was so great. Uh, from the chat, uh, Ang Angle and Magnus, Raw's ending, EC3 versus Hebner. Um, uh, EC3, uh, Styles, uh, the Raw ending, Bromance, uh, the Raw ending, Raw ending, Raw ending. It's just over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, all right, so fails of the week. What's your fail of the week? Go, Joe. Um, my fail of the week is the WWE uh, production crew. Miz comes out to present the award, and while his video plays on the Tron, the surrounding screens, the LED screens, were still playing the tons of funk stuff. So Miz is coming out, and it's got tons of funk globes spinning right by him. That's uh, yeah, that's my fail of the week, man. I was laughing about that. That was hilarious. It was the Mizco Inferno. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to go back and give a win of the week to Nick for that one. I love a good pun. <laughs> All right, Nick, fail of the week. Um, uh, this one also goes to the WWE production crew for uh, giving us the 2012 Slammies last night. Okay, uh, I'll give you that. But th th just th th these guys are the best production team we have ever, ever seen in our lives. And you two managed to fault the week in wrestling faults by two dumbass errors by them. You, hey, uh, should, hey, you, you get to pick your fail, I get to pick mine. This is what happens when you don't have Bischoff running things. Exactly. <laughs> your fail, ridiculous. your fail, Kevin. My fail is the teasing of the shield, the shield breaking up. I, I don't like it. I don't think it's necessary yet. I realize it is an eventuality. Y you have to have these guys go their separate ways, but I don't think this is a good idea yet. That there's still, in my opinion, a lot of mystery around them. What their actual sort of game plan and mission is. I think you could do a whole lot more with that. You know, maybe wait until after WrestleMania. I don't think it's a good idea right now. The way that they're going, I think it's going to break up soon. I personally don't feel this is a good idea, at least yet. Okay. Uh, Garvin, your fail of the week. Uh, I think we can definitely pull a bunch of fails from the Slammy Awards in general, just how things uh, ended up. But my fail, uh, I want to be kind of positive here and say that we just don't have enough time to talk about the positive things that are happening right now. 
like we totally forgot about Brodus Clay's uh, semi turn in the ring against Xavier Woods this week. I thought that was fantastic. So uh, yeah, I think there's just not enough time to talk about everything that's that we like. Lee, you got a fail? Well, my fail is the WWE production team. And no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not the WWE production team because you all are dumbasses for that. Anyway. The real fail is oh it's, oh what the hell am I on about the fail goes to Kevin for like trying to imply he's gonna butt fuck me next week. <laughs> fucking all you concerned about what beer fucking drinking Budweiser and I, and there's me fucking getting butt raped. Thanks hey cheers guys thanks for, thanks for knowing I've got you yeah I've got you back on that. Oh you know it's an eventuality Lee. Oh yeah I want to get my ass stretched by a drunken fucking American yeah too. <laughs> Quote of the week. Quote of the week. God, we're moving on. From the chat. uh, Garvin, Garvin, send me that audio, and that's going to be like a text tone when we text you. You're going to edit that round out, just so it it says, yeah. yeah. Bell is winning Diva of the Year. Roxena winning Match of the Year. The 2012 Slammy's logo coming up on screen. Uh, Zeb not winning the Insult of the Year. Uh, Knockout segment, Bromance, Bellas, Roxena, Zeb getting getting the shaft, basically. Uh, Roxena, uh, Sin Cara, Hunico gave Del Rio a concussion. Uh, Sheamus and Del Rio are now both out at the same time. Um, well, Chris is saying that's a win. I think it's a pretty big fail for Sin Cara to knock out Del Rio. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, just, yeah, just fails um, all up and down. Mostly just lots and lots of hate over how the Slammies uh, ended up. Uh, any final thoughts before we close out tonight? Yeah, I, I, um, for me, I just want to remind everyone, uh, we're going to be doing the live chat again for TLC. Uh, we had a lot of fun for pretty much every pay-per-view that we've done it with. Uh, so definitely uh, check out fanstalkwrestling.com this week for the live chat. We're going to be starting uh, right around 7.30 when um, the, the, the kickoff show uh, starts. So we'll be streaming that YouTube pre-show. And uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, and if Lee's gonna get butt raped and we put uh, and it's on video for some reason, we will make Harrison review it. What, what do you mean for some reason? <laughs> wow. But, what, why has this this idea has blown way way out of proportion? Yeah, it really has. All right, so that is the show. Wait, uh, wait, wait. wait. No, I'm sorry. Uh, fans of Minecraft, uh, we have new oh, videos. Yeah. So if you want to watch those, oh. uh, check out what we built. Oh, Nick, I had a message as well for you. You fail apparently. And you, you know who that's from. It's not from me, by the way. Thank you, McBrads. <laughs> it's, it's, it's surprisingly, it's not from him either. Shut up, Chris. <laughs> it, yeah, you're thinking you completely wrong here. Garf? Uh, one, one last thing, just a reminder to everyone, including us, next week is our final show of 2013. Um, so we're going to be recapping TLC, but it's also going to be our drunk episode, um, which I can't remember how those ever turn out. Because I'm drunk by the time it's over. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, yeah, I'm officially designated driving that one. Uh, whenever we do a drunk episode, it's always just a travesty, and we never remember what happened. So I'm going to be sober for that one, so I can try and keep you idiots on track. Harrison, that's the worst idea ever. No, no, no. I'll be <laughs> drunk this for a future episode. Happen. No, am I invited on this episode? Yeah, I think we usually blow the doors fuck? off of it. Yeah, what the fuck am I talking about? I'll be in fucking Kevin's basement, fucking doing it, won't I? Yeah. <laughs> you keep you know, I'm I'm like, like, I keep his basement. Let it go. You just are like running with this. Like it's kind of weird that he does keep bringing it up. I mean, you keep. I mean, you mentioned that you wanted to come visit the states, then you never actually showed up. So if it's so, if that's you know, what you need, it's just financial like being tied up in Kevin's basement, like some kind of like you know. Okay, get we're out gonna there, stop you know? right there and just. We'll facilitate we'll you. The drug Kevin's gonna tie you up and keep you just like <laughs> oh a girl in Cleveland. God. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay, man. that is the so show. So glad I do not live anywhere near you. <laughs> Thank you, you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, you can listen to every single episode <laughs> of the podcast on Tuesday nights, starting at <laughs> starting oh, at dear. seven o'clock. Now we got two Joes. How did this happen? Anyway, uh, <laughs> is it you Joe's face? To- Have you seen Joe's face? Look at his face. Wow. Train wreck of an episode. Oh, wait, 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 I got dropped like a bitch. Please remember that uh, geez, we got Google our DLC 2013 on results and live chat this Sunday during the show. Make sure you join us. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, for Garvin, Kevin, Lee, Nick, Joe, myself, the live chat, and all the hooligans in the world, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you.